put the children to bed. It's time for Dan and Aldo to bear their souls. I love the Chicago Bears more than I do masturbating, and that is a lot. Then, with three seconds left, Bob Avellini throws a 30-something yard touchdown pass to Greg Latta, and the Bears win, and I literally shit my pants. I swear to God, I literally did. <laughs> Eric Kramer, for me, I love the guy. He's a tragic figure. I mean, he embodies all that is. If they don't run the ball here, I'm going to vomit. I swear to God. Look, I don't mean any disrespect. He just didn't play that well. Not for a guy of his caliber. You know, they won, but I'm, I'm going to be miserable all week because they stunk. I don't, I don't really have any recollection of that at all, but I guess perhaps I blacked it all out. So, Dan, tape is the ultimate tool for scouts and for coaches to evaluate players, to detect plays and so forth. And they spend hours looking at tape, right? Why do they so often get shit wrong? I love the efficiency of bourbon. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan and Aldo. That music still gives me a hard on. <laughs> yeah, me too. That was one of the things I missed more than anything when we went through the run with uh, with Dan and, and Nomad was the different entrance. Yeah, love that you know, entrance. Uh, but the old, but the one with uh, Mr. Shorty and uh, Nomad was fun to produce. You were here. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we we wrote the script together. I videotaped you narrating it, and then I edited it together, and that, that was fun. We'll have to resurrect them if we could ever get them on the show together. We'll uh, we'll play it for people. Dan and and our yeah the other Dan, not me. I'm not speaking third person. The other Dan and Nomad are like like what's a duo that just gets together and then they break up and they get together it's like like cheech and chong or something <laughs> martin and lewis and cheech and chong yeah. yeah they're together then they hate each other then they're together and then i know uh nomad was a guest on his show did they have a fight or something well you know just in the past they oh okay yeah <laughs> that was a lot i hope that they're always like fans and friends and stuff moving forward you know mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at this. Cliff voted for Trump today. I don't know whether to say good for you or sing hell. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Cliff. Well, he does. He did promise a bloodbath. He did promise a bloodbath. And, you know, he's using all these Hitlerisms. But, uh, you know, he'll, he'll lose in November. Anyway, <laughs> I was thinking about voting for uh, Nikki Haley. We had the Illinois primary today. And I was thinking about voting for Nikki Haley for what you know <laughs> one vote for her and 99 million for uh, illinois votes for for trump that wouldn't have done any cliff he did say bloodbath you know but multiple I think it times was, yeah i think it might have been a little out of context that the way uh, liberals were using it but i don't know let's not talk politics yeah what we need not. to talk about is unity unity before we started the show Dan said, hopefully this will be the last time we talk about the Justin Fields trade and all of that. And so before we become united, we do have to address certain things. Like, for instance, before the show started this afternoon, Nano wrote, the division between us fans was created by fanboys who love a quarterback one over a team. Now it's healing time when the divisive quarterback one is traded for a bag of chips. Here come the excuses for zero trade value. Rest in peace, Steelers. What do you think about what Nano said there? Damn. <laughs> Not strong. to steal that from Ron Simmons, but fuck, that was stiff. <laughs> I, I, I disagree. Like, again, uh, I'll, you know, when I think of Fields, 
at least right now, maybe in 10 years, I'll have a different recollection. But what I think about is New Year's Eve against the Falcons, man, and the crowd chanting, we want fields, we want fields. And the guy, regardless if there's some people like that other gentleman who just don't like him, it, there was a vocal vocal uh, plurality of people that were in favor of him and respected him and liked him. And I, yeah, I agree. I think the Bears sort of failed Justin more so than Justin failed himself. That leads to a question for you, Aldo. You sure. know, both of us seemed pretty downtrodden by the trade on Saturday. We were texting back and forth. And then the next day, I believe, is when Courtney Cronin's report or tweet came out that the Bears took less deliberately to get him to a good situation. Do you think that that was just PR trying to satiate the the hurt feelings of us Bears fans that like Justin, or do you think that was realistic? Well, that's a good question. Could the Bears have put that out to win some support? And, and but I think that it just it divides it divides us more because. I think that, hey, Justin is a great guy. I love the guy. I will always root for him. The Justin Fields jersey that you purchased for me, I can't wait to wear it again, and I will wear it again when he passes for 3,000 yards, when he hits these milestones, which I know he will do. I I'm going to wear it proudly and say he could have been one of us. Now, um, I think – that the problem now is, is that a lot of people are mad at polls. And I feel a little like, well, dude, your obligation is first and foremost to the Chicago Bears. If you were really offered more value than what you got out of the Steelers, but you wanted to help Fields because that's where he wanted to go, I think what you did was wrong. Your obligation is to the Chicago Bears and us fans get us the higher value on a trade. And I know a lot of people disagree with me on that. They think it's a it's a good message to send to his players, the players in the locker room, the the agent now have a better working relationship. But the fucking agent isn't going to say, yeah, I'll give you a million dollars off because you helped out Justin. Bullshit. He's going to do what's right. He's got a fiduciary obligation to do what's right for his client. And polls didn't do what is right for the team if he did negate the uh, uh, trade offers that were better than what the Steelers gave him. What do you think about that? I think even if you were a, a vehemently passionate anti-fields guy, the most that we could get as a six-round pick is just there's no way that's true. If Kenny Pickett and Sam Darnold got, what, third-round picks for their respective teams? Yes. There's no way you could tell me that Kenny Pickett and Sam Darnold are worth more than Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. And Jay Sanders has it right. Courtney said polls waited too long and the value dropped. Teams called polls' bluff when he made them assume he would keep Justin and draft the quarterback. Yeah, he he basically said at the combine, I'm going to do right by Justin. And when you say that, you're saying, I'm going to trade him. And he should not have said that. Greg and I talked about that. Greg said, said he should have just kept his fucking mouth shut and said, we're going to listen to all offers. Uh, we think Justin is is progressing on his way up. And for those people who, who bitch and moan about Justin Fields, here's evidence of his improvement. Now, Caleb or whoever is drafted number one is going to walk in with weapons that we haven't seen before. And Dan, I want to ask nice you. Nice segue. Yeah, exactly. But first, I want to show this. Th these are DJ Moore's stats since in his pro career in the NFL from pro football re reference. His best year was in 2021 when he was targeted 163 times and accumulated 1,157 yards and four touchdowns. Last year, with fields throwing to him, fewer targets, yet 200, more than 200 more yards receiving and double the touchdown total. Now, th these are just stats and you can you know make them work however you want. But I think I take it as a testament to the fact that you give the guy talent at receiver and he can start to deliver. The rebuild, uh, Justin Fields was a part of the rebuild. And now he's not going to benefit from all the hard work and all the sacrifice and that he made to get this team to, what, six, seven wins last year? And now next year, 
we're, you know, we've got a chance to make the playoffs and Caleb Williams or whoever the quarterback is, is probably going to get all the accolades for that. I think it's just unfair to the young man, but you know, uh, it is what it is. Hey, I agree with you. It's Mm -hmm. almost like he was built, like Justin was like building the foundation of, you know, I'm going to be redundant, the construction of a building. And it's right to the point where it's about to have this grand opening and he, he gets, he misses it. He's not there for the finale, but he put all the blood and sweat and the tears and all that in the foundation of it. But to your latter point, I, I hate to say it, but I don't give a fuck. If Caleb comes in and starts winning because he's got more talent as a Bears fan, I will take it. Please, let's win. As much as I love Justin, I'm going to have to get the Williams jersey. Uh presumably that's who we'll draft and we don't know if he's going to be 13 that may go to keenan allen hell it, tyler scott has it right now so what if both guys end up with different numbers but <laughs> i hope true. that i hope that caleb doesn't get 13 so the dude from uh the score has to buy another jersey w- w- was that danny parkins danny parkins yeah <laughs> yeah i hope he i hope he has to buy another jersey that dude was so pompous about it anyway like, it I, really I, is, but yeah. I think he's purposely, you know, touching our buttons because now he's getting national publicity. This has almost made him famous. He was on uh, one of the national CBS sports talk shows. I think, you know, this might be his way to step up in terms of earning more money, going national. We might see him on, you know, FX1 uh, talking shit. So good for him. I invited him on the show. He was a guest on the bar room many years ago, and uh, he complimented what we were doing here. I wanted him back. Not so much that we could talk about that, but I just wanted to get his, I think he's a a very interesting broadcaster. I don't agree with a lot of his takes, but I, I think he's a, as a broadcaster, as a sports personality, the guy is good. I don't know. Wow, I like him better than Bernstein. Oh, Bernstein is way over the hill. I, I'm just not a fan of his. Not a mm-hmm. fan of Dan Bernstein. He's just always outraged. John says he locked on to more. Give it up. Fields was not good. I, you're absolutely right, John. He did lock on to more, and he bypassed other open receivers at times. But you look at Cole Komet's numbers. Yeah, Komet had good stats, too. And they've steadily increased as fields got better. I just feel, John, that, you know, he was on the precipice of becoming a good quarterback. And there's you can't argue with the fact that he played better football as his career went along. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if he beats out Russell Wilson for that job and might even be starting game one. What do you think about that? Danny? That would give us a fourth-round pick, so I'm all for it. Plus, I'd like to see Justin – succeed this is to me it's similar to when jim mcmahon went to san diego you know like Mm -hmm. i was still rooting for the guy i rooted for harbaugh when he went to indianapolis Mm -hmm. even though he wasn't our guy anymore i still wanted him to succeed uh i did not root for kyle orton in denver but most of the time when somebody goes somewhere else i still root for them and i will root for for fields moving forward i will Uh, too and you know there's no reason not to uh root for him unless he's playing against the bears Right, or yeah, like unless he would join the NFC North somehow later on. Yeah. Um, So I I wanted you to talk about uh, weapons because look at this. Um, I got this idea from NBC Sports Chicago. The stats are from Pro Football Reference. If you total up the amount of yards accumulated and touchdowns by the top three guys uh, the top three, uh, top two wide receivers and and starting tight end. You add up the bear stats, they are higher than Miami's. They are higher than A.J. Brown's. Now, I, again, this is like the the, the uh, stats for D.J. Moore, how they improved. You, you, this is not gospel, but this is a really good sign that fucking Caleb Williams is stepping into a great situation. 3,326 yards over 3,179 for Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle and their tight end, Durham Smith, and 3,114 yards and 17 touchdowns for Philadelphia's top three, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. The, the Bears have more touchdowns, the, the trio of D.J. Moore, Keenan Allen, Cole Komet, and more yards. That is a terrific trio. Now I asked you, can you do you remember a time that the Chicago Bears had a trio like this? I do. And I, I will throw some at you right here. Sure. How about 
Eric Kramer's 1995 Chicago Bears. Here go some stats for you. Okay. Now, before I touch on it, let me just say this. We always get fleeced by the Pittsburgh Steelers. They only <laughs> give us a sixth-round pick for fields. We had Cordell Stewart. We had Tim Worley. We had Merrill Hodge, Santonio Holmes, Marcus Wheaton, Chase Claypool. Every time we get a Steeler, they fucking suck, except one exception. Not to be re redundant again. The one exception is Jeff Graham. 1995, follow me on this, Jeff Graham caught 82 passes for 1,301 yards. His counterpart, our guy Curtis Conway, 62 catches for 1,037 yards. So again, you're looking at Jeff Graham with 1,300 yards, Conway with, uh, with almost 1,100, Conway with 12 touchdowns. Uh, Jeff Graham, too. And if you want to include the tight end here, big Keith Jennings. Keith Jennings only had 25 catches, but he had six touchdowns. Wow. So there's your now, trio. And then you throw in the rookie, Rashawn Salam, the late Rashawn Salam, who carried for 1,074 yards and 10 touchdowns. So that's some that's some offense right there. And you know oh, that. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Now, so let me ask you, what, what year was that? 1995. 19, what the fuck was I doing in 1990? Oh, That's the year that. we barely missed the playoffs because uh, San Francisco blew the lead to the Falcons in the last 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Wani's second I, year with the Bears. I got a new job that year, and that season is a blur to me because I was so you know focused on doing good at this new job and so forth. When the name Jeff Graham is mentioned, I kind of zone out. He was a Bear? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So I'm glad solid, you brought man. that up. Yeah. And, and Steven Zim Zimmerman says Alshon Jeffrey, Brandon Marshall, Mar Martellus Bennett, and Matt Forte. That was a nice foursome there. Right. Yeah. I was going to touch on that too. But just to show you Kramer again, we've talked about it a lot, but his mm -hmm. statistics that year, now his completion percentage in 1995, you have to keep in mind that's 95, not today's game. It was 60%. In 95, that was considered efficient. Today, you want that to be a lot higher, closer to 70. But uh, 60%, he had 3,838 yards passing, 29 touchdowns, only 10 picks. And that's with that duo of Curtis Conway and Jeff Graham. And again, big uh, Keith Jennings hauling in six touchdowns at tight end. And then Salam doing well as a rookie other than the fumbling. But to uh, Zim's point, if we go to 2013, which I think maybe 14 was statistically their better year as a trio, but if we look at 13, their first year together uh, as as the trio there with Martellus and Brandon and uh, Alshon, because Alshon broke his hand in 2012 and missed some time. But in yes. 2013, Alshon had 89 catches for 1,421 yards, seven touchdowns. That actually is better than Brandon that year, who did have a thousand or 100 yards who had 100 receptions, but only 1,295 yards. So Alshon had more yardage than him, but Brandon had 12 touchdowns. Mm -hmm. So those two guys are getting it done. And then Martellus, the same season, uh, 65 catches, 759 yards, and five touchdowns. And then, like you said, Forte, you know, running for 1,300 yards. And uh, how many catches do you have? 74. So, yeah, these guys were uh, yeah. exciting. And it's just like, what could have been? If they could have had Lovey's defense in their prime connected with that offense, then, man, we could have won a championship. Um, Forte is always going to remain one of my favorite Bears. It, it, you know, I, I never buy jerseys of current players. I, I would consider buying a Matt Forte jersey because I just love his style of, of running back play so much. Yes, he wasn't a great in-between-the-tackles running back, but he's the, 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 the type that I love – being able to catch the ball out of the backfield and able to make people miss downfield. I just loved his style of play. Now, you're not that big of a Forte fan, right? I mean, he was excellent receiving, and I mm -hmm. can't take that away from him. But it, like I said, right there, he had 1,300 yards. I was one of the guys that, again, longed for a guy that could run your ass over. Mm -hmm. Spoiled maybe by the early days of Neil Anderson and, and the later days of Walter Payton growing up, you know. And, you know, a big bowling ball kind of back that could run you over. That's what I liked. That's why when they signed Michael Bush, I thought, okay, Bush was really good at Louisville, was really good with the Raiders. I saw he comes to the Bears. He can catch. He can run people over. It just didn't work out for some reason with the Bears. 
but I thought Michael Bush was really good at one point in his career and, and really liked the, the signing at the time. And Fizzle Joe asks, why don't the Bears allow jersey number zero? Do you know why? I do not know that. I know last year, um, who was it? So they were going to go to zero and they didn't. Uh, oh, um, it, uh, Darnell was Mooney it? was supposed to be going to zero, but then didn't. And like this got brought up again recently with Swift. Swift wore zero with the Eagles. And they the Bears, maybe it was Courtney, maybe it was... Maybe Pat Finley, somebody said, oh, yeah, the Bears won't allow zero. So I didn't hear the rationale behind it. Maybe, it, it, hey, Swanky, uh, maybe it's uh, because there was an old bear from the Hallis days as coach that they haven't retired. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't even know that they don't allow that. So I'll, I'll do some research on that. Somebody but, just, could you repost a comment about Ironhead? I missed it because I was looking yeah. at you. Oh, that's the wrong one. Let's see. Uh, Flex Diggs says Ironhead Haywood was a bowling ball that we got from the Steelers. Well, uh, not to contradict him, he was actually uh, from New Orleans. His son that's played right. for Pittsburgh. That's Ironhead, right. Yeah, Ironhead was really good with New Orleans, and then we got a thousand yards with Atlanta after the Bears because when he was with the Bears, he was way too heavy. But mm -hmm. we signed Ironhead, and New Orleans signed Brad Muster, so it kind of looks like a trade. But they were both free agent acquisitions. Yeah. Mr. Shorty says it's time to absorb yourself in Caleb videos and then get uh, ready to be pissed off two times when they trade the pick to Washington. I oh, tell that you what, happen. that better that's happen. not going to happen. That is not going to happen. I'll tell you what, Mr. Shorty, uh, later after Tucci's Bears State of Affairs, which should happen in about an hour from now, uh, I am going to look at some tape and narrate voiceover some video of Caleb Williams' first game at college where it was a breakthrough performance. And I'll get into all that, share the video, share, share some of the highlights and, and narrate some of that. But that'll be later, probably a little past an hour from now. Tooch is scheduled to be here about 8.15. We'll listen to his Bear State of Affairs. And by the way, the guy is hitting it out of the park with his Bear State of Affairs. You know, like I said last week, um, Dan and I were, were talking, saying, man, his video cracks, uh, breaks up so much. We don't understand what the fuck's he saying. <laughs> right. <laughs> now I'm looking forward to it because he got a new camera or a new computer, whatever. There's a new laptop or something. Yeah, it's yeah. he's on fire now. He's on fire, man. Outstanding. I've been isolating some of the videos and putting them up on YouTube, getting great numbers. So good for Tooch showing off for us. I love it. All right, uh, back to the story. The trade, um, I, again, I'm never going to be happy with this. I believe Ryan Poles made a huge mistake. I can't wait for him to face uh, the, the media and answer why. You know, didn't you really screw He's this He's probably up? hired a PR firm right now to help him shape <laughs> the answers. <laughs> You're right about that. <laughs> what do you think about the acquisition of Keenan Allen, uh, who is coming off his best season as a pro, but will be 32 years old when the season starts? Yeah, I think we talked about this via text privately. Of course, no one else was privy to that. But I like the trade. I, I think it's, it's solid. And he's got still, you know, gas in the tank. So in theory, I hope, and the question was broached with him, have they talked about an extension? And he said, not yet, but maybe, you know, that'll come. It's a paraphrase. I think you have to, maybe it's a two-year deal, add to it, bring his cap number down a little bit. I don't know how much the Chargers are going to pay of that versus us. But still, I think it was $18 million this year on, on the cap number. But you could decrease that. And then just get him a little bit of security. Give him a two-year extension, and then he's here 32, 33, 34. He could still be in his prime there. I don't want him to just do be one and gone. Well, I, I got a feeling that's probably going to be the case. And uh, yesterday on Gabriel Talks Football, Eric Galco, who is the executive di uh, director of the East-West Shrine Bowl game and is very connected with NFL insiders, says that he still feels that Roma Dunze is going to go to the Bears because the Bears are trying to do everything to make Caleb Williams happy. And apparently those guys are good friends and have been talking a lot this offseason. Plus, uh, Daniel Jeremiah and his latest um, – a mock draft that was released today, he has a Dunze going to the Bears. So if the Bears make that pick, I think 
you know, we'll see the three of those guys together, DJ Moore, Roma Dunze, and Keenan Allen. We'll see them together just for one year. I don't think that they'll uh, uh, pay big money because I think Allen wants another big payday before he retires. He's he's not he's going to want eighteen twenty million dollars a year, especially if he has a great season playing with Caleb. What do you think? I want him at least give him a one year uh, added on to it. Mm-hmm. You know, so you can justify that pick too. If you know, you gave up what a fourth round pick for that. So, mm-hmm. and make him feel comfortable, make him buy a house, make him stay in the area. You know, like if he's don't, you don't want him to be one and done. And, and wide receivers, as you know, have been stereotyped as being divas. Yep. You, you, you don't want this guy like worried about being hurt and like what mm-hmm. happens if I get, I have nowhere, I have no contract. Don't make him a lame duck. Give him a, at least another year. I think, and then you can bring all those three guys together for two years, and then maybe that equates championship. Who knows? I would, I would love it. I, I would definitely love it if we could have those three guys for a two or three year span. And uh, Keenan Allen was asked, you know, why didn't you renegotiate your contract? And he goes, I would have. They basically were asking me to take a cut and pay, and I'm coming off my best season. Why should I take a cut and pay? And that's rationale you can't argue with, right? Uh, so, you know, if they can work out a deal, you know, the salary cap is always something that can be manipulated. And now that we're going to have a rookie quarterback salary before Caleb, you know, makes $75 million a year in five years from now, now's the time where you can make these big purchases. And so maybe investing in Keenan for two or three years uh, would be a good thing. I wouldn't do it right away, though. I would wait till the middle of the season and, uh, just before that deadline. Just to make sure that there's chemistry there, I doubt that there's going to be any issue. The guy always gets open. The guy always makes tough catches, which is why I like Roma Dunze. He's he, he said Roma Dunze say I, you know fifty fifty balls. I don't believe in that. I believe a hundred zero, and I love that mentality. A guy that goes up there and gets it, and of course we know what DJ can do. So good times, and I believe Cole Komet could have his first one thousand. Uh, yard season receiving. Uh, so, uh, man, what I'm about excited. the line though? Uh, we've had we've signed a couple of veterans here and there. I know uh, Greg Gabriel is strongly behind Braxton Jones, and and I hope Greg is right on that. And mm-hmm. I li- we like our right tackle, you know, from last year's draft. Uh, mm-hmm. But what about their line here? We've signed the guy that might be the center, mm-hmm. and we've got the backup. I mean, wh- where are we at here? We've signed a couple of guys, but. What, what do you think here? We still have to draft a couple more pieces up front, right? I agree. I, you know, um, this is a a deep draft for offensive tackles, so we could get a backup for Darnell Wright uh, and Braxton uh, uh, Braxton Jones in in day three. There should be somebody good there available. The thing is, is you know, you're gonna have to make a trade of that number nine pick to acquire more assets if you want a higher quality player because we only have one pick on day two of the draft and it's a third round pick we don't have a second rounder and i took a quick look at the free agent offensive lineman there's nothing there of any quality so you have to try to find a gem at the offensive line the way the offensive line is now on paper i would give it a a higher grade than what we had last year, but a lot of that depends on Nate Davis playing football. And Tevin Jenkins playing. (laughs) Yes. Tevin Jenkins is so important to this line because he sets that mean streak uh, that you want out of an offensive line. And he also has to improve his pass blocking. He's probably one of the best run blockers in football, but as a pass blocker, he gets beat every now and then. So Davis... And uh, Jenkins still worry me a little bit. So they have acquired some depth with Ryan Bates. And now Sheldon, uh, whatever his name is, is moving into that center. He's not great, but he's better than Sam Mustafer. He's better than Cody White here. So uh, uh, it's going to be a better line, but it could be better. And so maybe... Maybe with that second first rounder that we we get, maybe we draft a one of the quality offensive linemen, or maybe and, trade down to get more picks out of it too. Yeah, exactly. Getting into that, uh, getting into that second round, 
I did a mock draft today. I traded that number nine pick for J Jacksonville's number 17 or 17 or 19, and I picked up a defensive lineman and was still in the second round because I acquired a second round pick, was still able to acquire a decent offensive lineman. So there's things that can be done. But, but if um, they trade that ninth pick, then there's your wide receiver that you wanted too. So ex exactly, exactly. We'll, we'll be stuck with Dante Pettis as our third wide receiver. Yeah, they brought Pettis back. Well, you figure they like Ryan Poles, man. It's like he just loves Valus Jones, like it's his own fucking child or something. Mm -hmm. And you got Valus and and then Tyler Scott, who was very disappointing as a rookie. Mm -hmm. as well as, uh, like you said, Pettis coming back, presumably just to return punts. You can get rid of the white guy that wore number 15 who was very underwhelming. Yeah. Well, hey, Pettis has had his injury issues too, so I almost think that Pettis is just a camp body. Uh, I, you know, he might make the team. But, but he's a uh, decent punt return. At least we don't have to worry about him fumbling so much. Yes, he'll, he'll have you know a, a great set of hands. Um, my hope, and don't throw anything at me my hope is that we can resurrect Velas jones career somehow and, and maybe he needs to move into more of a gadget player get him some uh pass or excuse me some runs out of the backfield he was very successful with that throw a lot of these short wide receiver screens and stuff i i just maybe shane waldron can unlock the Velas jones thing because that was a big investment and i'd love to see it you know, us get something out of it. It would really help this team immensely. I don't have a lot of hope for Bayless, unfortunately. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> your temperature I, went all the way down. I would love to be like, man, Bayless turned it around and, and be happy for him. Mm -hmm. But I just, man, he just can't hold the goddamn ball. Yeah. I, uh, I I feel the same way. You know, I, I, I don't have a lot of confidence that he can turn around, but I have a lot of hope that he can turn it around, you know? So we'll what do you see. think about the tight end that we got from the chargers? Oh, love Gerald Everett. I had him on my fantasy team a couple of years, had delivered big weeks. He's not that guy who is going to, you know, give you big time production week in and week out like a George Kittle or a Travis Kelsey, but he is a guy that will every once in a while, give you a two touchdown game, a one touchdown game. 75 yards receiving and he's great yeah he's considered to be one of the best yak tight ends in football yards after the carry so you throw him the ball over the middle and he'll run over defensive backs i think shane waldron loves to use these two tight end formations the 12 uh formation and so we're going to see a lot of activity out of everett and cole Komet. and nobody great. disappointed more last year than the former Packers tight end that we signed that wore number 18. What was his name again? I've already blocked him out, even though he was a Bears fan growing up. Oh, uh, uh, Tanyan. Yeah, Robert Tanyan, man. God, what a shitty year. That catch he dropped against the Browns. I mean, and then at the end of the game with Darnell Mooney dropping to Hail Mary, both of these cats are gone now. But imagine if they win a couple of those games. Like, we're not even here. Fields is still here. Yeah. You know, the thing with Robert Tanyan, and, and I always uh, wondered why so many fans were high on him, he, all, he had only one good year with Green Bay where he caught nine or ten touchdowns. But he was injured, and uh, the production wasn't, you know, wasn't consistent. Um, you know, I, I was hopeful that he'd regain some of that nine-touchdown type performance, but he, he just – he just isn't that guy. When he dropped that pass, what game was that? When he dropped that, that was pass? the Browns game, the same one that Mooney dropped it in. Oh, fuck. At the end, yeah, he was so wide open. I was behind the play because remember I was at the game, and I'm like, oh, that's a touchdown. Wait, he dropped it. Yeah. God damn it! <laughs> you know, like, how did he drop that? He's wide. Oh, he's a professional receiver. How did he drop that pass? And then at the end of the game, Mooney like kicking up that hail mary into the air to get it picked off. Oh, my God. I mean, uh, Justin Fields, you can say what you want about Fields, but we deserve to win that game. Exactly. You know, uh, Justin, uh, when you look at the weapons that he had and guys who are dropping passes like Mooney and Tyler Scott and, and uh, Tanya. And Tyler Scott against Detroit. He cost yeah. us that game. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, every quarterback has – players that drop passes but that is going to decrease this year with the players that the bears have for caleb williams there's no doubt about it and i'm just again a little bit sad 
I'm moving on, everybody. Don't throw rocks at me. I'm moving on to Caleb, but it still saddens me that we do this rebuild, and now that we finally got some offensive weapons for the quarterback, we get rid of the quarterback. <laughs> Yeah, he had so many electric plays. I know everyone's going to say, ah, but what about what about this? What about that? Well, you're leaving out all the negative stuff. By the way, I love the Tarantino shirt. Thank you, uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there were so many great moments with Fields. It's kind of, I think that that is the hook. I sent you an article. I don't know if you got a chance to read it from The Athletic. Uh, and that was what they were trying to examine with the statistics of Justin Fields not being the best, certainly. How did he get this hook on so many Bears fans, including myself? Yeah, and it was just yeah. that dynamic playmaking ability that he showed, like starting out at that Miami game that we attended together. Yeah. He, man, he just had that intangible factor of like this dude could score from anywhere at any time on the field. And we haven't had that. And I, I think a lot of the anti fields people dismiss that so often is that he was electric, man. And, and, Man, I hate that he's gone. I do. I'm going to support Caleb Williams. I'm a company guy. I'm the guy the Bears want. I'm going to buy this fucking kid's jersey. Probably all four of them. You know, at some point, the white one, the throwback white one, the orange one, and the navy one. They, they got me. I'm fucking stuck. I'm here, man. I'm stuck. So I'm rooting for the next guy. But it sucks, man. I hate that Justin's gone. I do. I hate it. I showed this photo to uh, Mike North today. Because he was like, you know, you guys love this guy. What's going on with you guys? Uh, Heidi's buying shirts. Uh, sleep expert. I forgot, forgot her name. She's buying shirts. And then I said, wait a minute. Wait, I got to show you Dan's collection. And he's got a hoodie and a, and something, a couple of other Justin Fields stuff. And, you know, we had every reason to fall in love with the guy. You know, he, he was spectacular. One of the things that I wanted to do for this show, and I – it, it was a thought, and I didn't follow through on it, was to put together a highlight reel of our favorite Justin Fields plays while he was in Chicago for these last three seasons. I'll tell you, number one is probably him sliding. It's not a play. Oh, in the rain, in the rain. Yeah, yeah that was just a, 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 a iconic moment for him but the number one play was the game that you and i as shorty went to when he scored that rushing touchdown for 60 plus yards against I the mean, dolphins yeah uh, excuse me the dolphins this was my expression I and was, i was and i was yelling i told you he's good i told you he's good yeah. when are you gonna buy in aldo gandia <laughs> when are you getting a jersey i was like i and told you he's good. fucking good and I bought that's you right. the jersey. That's right. So he's bought five jerseys. One of them is mine. <laughs> what did Mike North say? What was his response to? And I like Mike. Don't get me wrong. I like Mike yeah. on air, and he's been a gentleman to me personally. Um, yeah. But he's still tweeting about Trubisky. Oh yeah, you know he he looks at Trubisky's what twenty nine and twenty one record and thinks that that automatically classifies him as a good quarterback. And you can't argue with the fact that a winning record with a quarterback is important. But the fact is that the you know he, he can't see the second and third receivers. He had the same problem Justin had, and he didn't have as uh, you know the running ability. He had good running ability. Don't get early. Wrong. Until yes. he got popped against Minnesota, and then he was reticent to run. And again, I like Trubisky. I did, but it felt yeah. like, and it's this is a sin for me to say this, considering I'm not an athlete, but and i got to be honest with you, and this is just an opinion. It's not a fact. I felt that he was a little bit, I don't want to say scared, but mm -hmm. again, reticent, I think, is the best. He was, he was reticent to run after he took that hit from Minnesota and hurt his shoulder. Whereas Justin was always willing to mix it up and and definitely, yeah. I think he was courageous. Because, man, there were times where Justin would walk, like that game against the Falcons. Mm -hmm. Like he's on the sidelines almost dead getting massages. And as soon as he comes in, gets he runs a quarterback sweep to the left. And, and he, can, he can't even stand up hardly. And you're, and you're asking him to run. And he does it. Mm -hmm. I, to me, Mitch was really, really did not want contact right. when he came back from that hit. One of the things that I'm really hoping for uh, with Shane Waldron is 
Stop telling these quarterbacks, like we did with Trubisky and Fields, that your number one priority is to protect the ball. Yeah, protect the ball against fumbling, but be a gunslinger. You know, it, it, throw it into tight spots. You know, don't worry about the interceptions because they drilled that so much into Trubisky and Fields, and I think it retarded their prog- uh, their their progress. They they were thinking too much. You know, I don't want to turn it over. Turn over. How, what do you think about that? Well, you're, I want to bring that to Mike too, uh, but I'm glad you said that because it's. I wanted to respond to Mike online when he tweeted this on X, but I didn't want to seem like I was just being a detractor or, or you're all, you're almost playing a heel or something. Uh, but he mentioned like Cutler's losing percentage against Green Bay and mm-hmm. like the interceptions. Mm-hmm. I, I like the fact that Jay slung the ball around. I like the Rex threw the ball, like you said, and there was no fear. Now, granted, there was games against Washington where you're like, Jay, come on, man, quit throwing the same pick to the same guy over and over and over. But what I would like to say to Mike, all the Bears quarterbacks have lost to Green Bay. I mean, who hasn't lost to Green Bay? We've had 30 years of just getting it up our ass and not even for pleasure, like for their pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> they're finishing in our ass and not even giving us the ru- the, the reach around. They they come and leave us there to, to to lay in their nut is what they've been doing for thirty years. So, but he was talking about because somebody tweeted Mike and said the best Bears quarterback who get ever was probably other than Luckman, I guess it, it was uh, Cutler. And of course, mm-hmm. he pointed out that Jay you know lost the championship game and the losing percentage against Green Bay. But I want to say what Bears quarterback does have. A great quarter, a uh, winning percentage against Green Bay since Jim McMahon. Right, uh, that's exactly what I was going to say. I, I like that idea as a T-shirt. You know, something like uh, "It's time for us to finish in the Packers' ass." You know, so, yeah. something like that. It's going to be a little pithier, but uh, you're onto something that could sell a lot of T-shirts. <laughs> Eric Kramer, uh, Irish Rastafarian, says, "I love that Irish Rastafarian." I loved you know, Eric, he, but we, we lost both games in '95, thirty-five uh, to twenty-eight up there. And uh, uh, Doctor Draft Doctor Phil always told me he was at that game, and we lost twenty seven to twenty four in week two at Soldier Field. That's where the the guy jumped out of the stands and caught the the field goal attempt or the extra point. We lost both times in ninety four. Uh, so yeah, like did I, Eric never beat the Packers mm-hmm. as a Bear? Never, not any of the games, huh? Well, ninety six, he's out in week four, and like Dave Craig played at least I think both of those games. Uh, in 95, I just talked about how they lost two. They got swept in 94. They got swept in 96, 97, and 98. Wani was 0-10 at one point in that stretch. Yeah, because Wani beat the Packers in 93, but that was with Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh, geez. Yeah, Harbaugh beat them. And Harbaugh and the fun matchup was in 91 when Harbaugh beat Tom Zach. When Tom mm-hmm. Zach started a game for Green Bay. But Harbaugh's last win against Green Bay was against Brett Favre, actually, in 93 in Chicago. Yeah, we had that little streak there towards the end of Favre's stay with Green Bay. Oh, Rex was beating him. Yeah, like three out of four contests, something like that. I I don't remember exactly. You probably know that much, much better. But Yeah, it started out in 04. They went up there in week two in 04, and Thomas Jones like ran all over him. I bought his jersey that day, and uh, they won. Yeah, ninety in, in, in 04, and then in 05, Rex came back and won the division against Green Bay on Christmas. Mm-hmm. And in uh, earlier that season, KO started, and there was a the footage from the game, that like, like prime time when they would show the highlight, like coming up mm-hmm. next, uh, they would show Brett Favre grimacing in slow motion, and he had blood on his like hand, and because he, he he just got he took a beating that like I could get hard thinking about this if I keep talking. <laughs> Brett Favre stand there bloody and beaten and old, and then in 07, we swept them, uh, and that was a combination of KO and uh, and Brian Greasy with the wins. Greasy won was- up there, and then KO won in Chicago. Yeah, and the la- that was Favre's last game as a Packer uh, at Soldier Field, and he was like, "Oh, I I admit that I just didn't want to play today. The wind, it was so cold, I didn't want to be here." It's like. Wow, like we've made Brett Favre admit this shit in a presser. Like we're doing wow. something right, right? But then we come yeah. back and get swept in 08. So Yeah, that's that's true in 08. No, we no, we did swept. win in 08. We won it the last game at, at Soldier Field. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's when Alex Brown blocked uh, a, a field goal at the end. 
And oh, yeah, we okay. won that. We beat Rodgers on a, a Monday night with with uh, I guess with Kyle Orton mm -hmm. in in two thousand eight. Yeah, man, your recall on this is so. F Most of the recall is about losses, though. So <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> when are we uh, gonna change that storyline? <laughs> how many times have you know in your lifetime? You, you have hope and you know the bears have to go to lambo and it's like they're they're in the playoff hunt if they can just win this one game and then they lose like 38 to 3 yeah unbelievable. how many times did that happen you remember that game the the worst one arguably uh, in terms of just oh my god like i can't even hold my head up was on that sunday night game when we thought this is it tressman's going to get fired when he was down 42 to nothing in the first half mm -hmm. like holy yes, shit yes i remember that yeah, uh, you talk yeah. about a beatdown. Like, how much more of this shit do we have to take as a fan? You know, that's why I'll tell you. I I am always uh, surprised when people who don't live in Chicago like you still are still Bears fans. Despite you got to be loyal, fact. Aldo. You got to be loyal. I know, but you know, to me, my loyalty was always connected to the fact that I live here. So I can, right. there's no fucking way I'm going to root for a, a team over here or over there because they're winning. I'm going to root for Chicago. This All is right. Well, let I me live. pose you a question then. So again, what were you? If I recall, you moved to Chicago when you're like eight, nine, ten, somewhere yes, through there. Eight. Well, yes, what if eight. like by you know, age thirteen or fourteen, your family says we're going back to New York? Would you have become a Giants fan then, or a Jets fan? Uh, Probably because the Bears were losing a lot in this early 60s. I mean, the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s. So, yeah, probably I would have, you know, I would have my allegiance. I, I, I think, you know, I'd have to live through it to say uh, for, sur for sure. Right, right, but right. My allegiance would have been where I'm living. You know, I'm in New York. Back in New York, I'm going to be a Yankee fan uh, like my father was and a Giants fan and blah, blah, blah. So, But the irony is, the irony of this is it's a short drive 20 miles down the road for you, but you don't go to a lot of games despite the availability because, again, it is hard to get at Soldier Field. I love it inside, but it sucks getting there. I get, So my point is, even though it's easily accessible for you, you're not there. Like every, You're not a season ticket holder. No, so I'm saying. No. So I think you would like the Bears, even if you left, is what I'm saying. Because you just I, I, you like yes. the Bears, man. You're you're right that now there's no way I could fucking move to you know Europe, and I will always be a Bears fan. I'm I'm locked in. There's nothing that's going to change my mind. You know, my allegiance to Chicago baseball, eh, fuck it. I don't give a fuck if they win or lose. You know, I'd love for them both to win and be in a World Series. That was my, my kind of a wish that I had as a kid. But I don't love baseball like I love football. The, the Bulls, a slightly different story because I lived through the six championships of Michael Jordan, so they're in my blood. But I don't watch them as often now because I'm busy with, with this uh, endeavor here at the bar room. And, and, well, the and, NBA is just the product is so different from that that also I'm, I'm turned off by a lot of shit in the nba where guys are, are you know bringing their buddies over to form their own teams i'm, I'm kind of old-fashioned i understand it's their right to do that they got the power but it, 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 the allegiance that michael jordan had for the city of chicago is always going to be a part of why i am going to be loyal to the chicago bulls well anyway. with the bears uh, again i've said this so many times but it's worth mentioning again at the height of my adversity, when I was going through a divorce and stuff, when I found the bar room, uh, again, it was the night you had Kyle Long and Akeem Hicks on together. Yeah, yeah. And they're playing video games and cussing and stuff. So what I'm saying is not to get dramatic or even negative. There's no reason to rehash how I felt at the time. But suffi suffice to say, the Bears in some ways like kind of saved my life. And, uh, you know, at the, the height of like depression and sadness and Granted, they give me a lot of depression and sadness too. But if the Bears are, there's nothing better. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe when you're younger and you're like you know you're getting a lot of ass or something, maybe that's that's better. Maybe, but <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, like now, I mean, on a Sunday, a random Sunday, and the Bears win, and it just it feels like, is there anything better in life? I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't I know, agree. man. 
when I when I was a teenager and I was first, you know, getting laid and stuff, I'll never forget this moment where the, the Bears were playing in the Western Conference Finals against the Warriors. And I was so thinking, man, we're finally going to make it to the NBA Finals. It's really going to happen. And my girlfriend wanted to have sex, so I'm having sex with her, but I'm watching TV like this, you know. <laughs> Is that the, the Jerry of- Sloan days as the player there? Yeah, Jerry Sloan, right, Norm but- Van Leer, Bob Love, uh, all those guys. I'm watching the game while I'm having great sex. But uh, uh, I think, um, no, I'm certain that we lost that game against the Warriors. We didn't make it to the NBA Finals. And But what I'm thinking that I'm That would have been so 75, certain, right? When the Warriors won it all? 75. Excellent. Yeah. Good job. But I, I, I believe I lost my heart on. So <laughs> sex wasn't so good. <laughs> Yes, I told you this is true. this is so true. And again, maybe spoiler, maybe she attends with us in a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. But the first blowjob I ever received in my life, and I can say it was from Nikki because like it's not a problem now since we're back together again. She's not going to be pissed about that. But again, Curtis Conway got mad because of a, a, a PI that wasn't called as bullshit. He threw his helmet against Washington. That's the day I was getting my first blowjob when Conway threw his helmet. <laughs> That's my first ever blowjob when Conway threw his helmet. I don't know if I lost my heart on or not, but I still was watching. <laughs> it's 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 so funny that uh yeah, Chet Walker, PJ. Could I ask uh, uh, answer Adam real quick? I'm sorry, Aldo. Yeah, I want you to no, say no, what you're gonna go say. Ahead. It was Jim McMahon. Uh Jim McMahon was everywhere. I mean, pop culture. You, you, if you turn on the TV, even as a kid, like whatever I was watching. You know, they were there. Jim McMahon was on so many commercials and he just was so fucking cool. And I'm like, who is that guy? They said, that's Jim McMahon. I said, well, who does he play for? They say he plays for the Bears. I said, well, that's my team then. So then every time I'd look, I, I was already reading the TV guide and stuff at like five. I was like, anytime the Bears come on, I'm watching because I want to see that Jim McMahon play. So there you go. It was all Jim McMahon. There's, there's people from around the world who have that same sentiment. They became Bears fans because of the 85 team, McBann and you know, Bridge and Walter. Bridge. Right. Exactly. Uh, look at Cornelius says he's seen two Bears championships. Papa Bear. So Cornelius, you're about my age. You're more the age of uh, Mike North. Mike North was ac- actually at that 63 Which championship is awesome. game. Yeah. At Wrigley Field uh, against the Giants and then in 85. Pretty cool, Cornelius. You know something we haven't addressed yet, Aldo, that we, again, it's on the bottom because there's been so much bear for weeks. We've had to talk about what if, and what if Justin, and what if Caleb, I know it was bogging us down, but it was like newsworthy. So we had to talk about it. But one thing we have not been able to talk about, and again, I'm not trying to alienate anyone politically here, but I like and love the fall of Aaron Rodgers. I mean, they're even saying now that Bobby Kennedy Jr.'s people were like, that guy's such a fucking nut. You can't even put him on the ticket. <laughs> like like Rodgers, and they dug up all. Have you seen this shit? He, he was saying Sandy Hook was fake. Yeah. Like, he he's he might as well be, uh, uh, what's his name, at uh, InfoWars. He might, it might uh, you know. Alex Jones. Ali, he might as well be Alex Jones. Yeah. He's got, uh, he was saying that there's a false flag opera. I, he's just, fu- everything, I love the fact that everyone's seeing, because I've been saying this guy was a fraud and just an asshole. It's like, what kind of guy doesn't talk to his mom? What kind of guy yeah. won't talk to his dad or his brother? It just it hates everybody in his own family. Like, what a fucking asshole this guy is. I've been saying it for years, and now it's like almost unequivocally everyone's opinion, except for like Pat McAfee or somebody who, like sucks his dick constantly on air. Hey, uh, uh, before you answer this question from PJ, I, I, when I read that stuff about Aaron Ro- uh, Rodgers denying that Sandy Hook, well, no, he's denying that he ever said that. So allegedly saying that the Sandy Hook was fake. When, when I read that, I said to myself, you know, I have always been able to separate the football player from the man, you know, so he could express his conservative beliefs, his outlandish beliefs and so forth. But when I read that, that's crossing the line. If I had a chance to pick up Aaron Rodgers at his prime and, and I knew that he was that type of a thinker where he's denying the fact, the true facts of children being brutally murdered because he's buying into these conspiracy theories. Fuck you, Aaron Rodgers. I'd rather go with PT Willis. (laughs) <laughs> God. I was thinking I, I can't really make this joke in this day of age, but so I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to set it up and say it's a joke before I even say it. Do you remember that Christopher Walken movie 
in 83 or it's like a Stephen King film where at the end of it, he feels he has to do this assassination of the politician. I never saw it, but yeah, I know the movie. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Uh, I was going to make the joke. It's like, if we could go back in time, you know, Rogers, we know who you are. You sick bastard. You know, <laughs> we're taking you down in 06 before you even start. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, uh, what was the last right, uh, answer? PJ uh, PJ was asking about your neck. How, how are you feeling? Oh, thank you for asking PJ. Uh, it's good. You know, the surgery was in January. It kind of feels just like, uh, the spot where the scar tissue from it, the dead zone. Mm -hmm. Exactly. To which thank you. Uh, it just movie. kind of feels like a, I don't know, you know, just like a, not a mole, but something similar. It just, it feels like a spot, you know, but there's no pain and there's no cancer. So thank God. Thank you, PJ. I appreciate you asking. Yeah. My, my brother had a, a golf ball size lump on the back of his neck. Uh, so did I, <laughs> how is yeah. your brother though? Yeah, but by the way, that was like 20 years ago. My brother, uh, latest news, breaking news, my brother a week ago uh, passed out, couldn't talk when he was revived, couldn't walk, and so they rushed him to the hospital, and they found out that he had uh, kind of an aneurysm in his brain. It's something called ACM, AMC, or something like that. Anyway, I forgot the acronym, but it's basically when the arteries and veins in your brain get tangled up. And the reason that happened was just because his blood pressure was just way off the charts. And so um, he's actually started to talk a little bit now. And uh, there's reason to be optimistic that AVM, thank you, Litany. Uh, and so there's reason to be optimistic that he's going to come out of this all right. And I'm just happy because he, he drinks like about, I would say, a case of beer every day or every two days. And so he's just, and he has done more than his fair share of cocaine. So I'm just hoping that th this will finally motivate him to just focus on his grandchildren, focus on his health and so forth, so that he can, you know, have a life that for another 10, 15 years, as opposed to, you know, this is a joke. Now we don't want to make jokes about people's health. So I'm prefacing this. Don't think I'm an asshole. This I is a joke, but I, I, I know the way to get your brother back and just out of it. You tell him, hey, man, Justin Fields got traded to the Steelers. He's a Pittsburgh fan. <laughs> he's he's gonna a huge. <laughs> he's going to want a Fields Pittsburgh jersey. He's going to want your Bears Fields jersey. He's going to say, I've got to see this kid play. I'm not going anywhere. That is not a joke. That is reality. I'm going to go see him this weekend. And so when I tell him about Justin Fields, because he doesn't know, uh, he probably is going to jump out of bed into a, an Irish jig, whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Irish, real quickly, sub uh, sub referencing. I watched a film last night I'd never watched in my entire life with Tom Cruise as an Irishman, and uh, he was married to Nicole Kidman called Far and Away. Ron and Howard was, movie. Yes, I man, I expected nothing from that film, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, I saw it in a big screen downtown Chicago Esquire Theater. Beautiful, beautifully shot, uh, great cinematography, pretty decent story. Nicole Kidman looks super hot. And, she and does. I've always said that Cruz is a pretty good actor, and I think he pulled off that role pretty good. It's a great yeah, movie, I, right? I it's think so, too. It's just the Scientology thing that rubs people the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, because, like, apparently he's, like, like God in that religion. But as a mm -hmm. pure actor, I mean, it's I like him. He does all his own stunts. Going back to Risky Business, I love that film, you know? Yeah, he's done a lot of movies that I really like, you know? Uh, even the Mission Impossible movies, I love those movies. I, I never, like, set out... I, well, I take that back. The first one was directed by Brian De Palma, who was one of my right. favorite directors. So I wanted to see it, and I, I liked it, and so forth. And then after that, they weren't directed by De Palma, so I said, eh. But I, I found myself watching some of them and liking every single one. And and a lot of it has to do with Cruz and his dedication to doing stunts and great production values. It's, it's good. I like to eyes hey, wide I, shot. I lot. love that Kubrick movie. Uh, yeah. geez. I, I just wish we would have seen the European version because in America, 
uh, Warner Brothers was upset that they were, we were seeing what looked like soft porn. And so they digitally inserted bodies to cover up some of the penetration scenes. Not that we actually saw a dick going into the pussy, but that they were just alarmed. Hey, this isn't going to work down in, in Peoria. You know, so right. they... <laughs> they hid some. Uh, I'd love to get a copy of the European version and see. Hey, Litany. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, $20 from Litany. Uh, and uh, that is very, very, very nice of you, Litany. I set up this uh, uh, tip thing, tip jar, whatever it's called. And so, uh, Dan Aguirre, I expect $20 to be coming your way pretty soon. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, so, it, 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 I I just want to see the the unedited, unfucked around with version uh, by Stanley Kubrick. Uh, and so w- there's one other thing that I wanted to get to, because I know uh, Tooch is going to be making his way here, you know, in, pr- in preparation for today's topic about getting together as fans, the social media is just still just so fucked up in terms of people are angry. So for instance, I pulled this one. Fuck Ryan Poles. This guy used to have a different Twitter name. Now he's changed it to Fuck Ryan Poles because he's saying this JF1 shit got me depressed as fuck. I've been teary-eyed since the news. And then uh, this guy changed his name to Steelers fan, JF1. It, it, it wasn't Steelers fan, but he says it's actually quite liberating. Why can't fans be free agents too? I don't owe anything to the McCaskies after 40 years of failure and incompetence since 1985. And then this guy writes... Finally, they're surrounding Tyson Baggett of the <laughs> Chicago Bears with town. He doesn't give a shit about Caleb or whoever we're going to draft at number one. He's going to be a Bajan fan as protest. That's Shorty, the other Dan. He's a Bajan guy. Uh, yeah, not – come on, over Caleb? Maybe not now, but he was all he was going to buy Bajan's jersey last season. Is that right? I mean, I he, like They Tyson didn't have a large in stock. They, they went from like medium to two X and he's like, I'm not buying that. That guy is definitely gay. <laughs> is he talking about Dan or the guy that become a Pittsburgh fan? I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um, you know, so it, I, I mean, I can, I, I think that for the next several months, I will be, Going on to social media, and I'll be reading comments like that. The hurt about trading Justin Fields is, is it's going to be like, uh, you know, when you talk about people about World War II. Yeah, I'm still pissed off at those Germans <laughs> yeah. for what they did. So, uh, Cliff asks, uh, what if the Bears don't sign a quarterback, use Bajan and make the playoffs, and then sign Justin back from Pittsburgh? What the Boy, that seems like a smoking? lot of ifs. <laughs> the, and I do remember uh, the only – the thing that popped in my head immediately was Oakland traded Ricky Henderson to Toronto and he helped the Blue Jays win a World Series and they went right back to Oakland. So, yep. I mean, that yeah, happened in baseball 30 years ago, but I'm not sure if you could. I don't think Justin would ever be back here. I mean, I, again, I'm like everybody else that likes him and, you know, was saddened by the trade, still kind of the, the compensation seems so unfair that you're like, oh man, just. If you're going to trade him, trade him earlier and get more for him because he's got so much talent. There's no way you can't tell me he's not better than Sam Darnold or that fucking Cody Pickett or whatever his name was that the Steelers drafted from the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, or not Cody Pickett. I think he's a 49. Anyway, the guy they traded recently. Um, I just don't... That part, I'll never necessarily get over, but I can't switch teams, man. I told oh. you the story. My I thought I'd be go, become a Chargers fan when McMahon was traded to San Diego. And my dad was like, you can't do that. You're a Bears fan. Like life lessons from from Danny Aguirre Sr. <laughs> like to tell you cannot switch teams. Something he told me in the summer of 89. I and love I, it. You can't switch teams. No, you can't do it. You just can't do it. it it's not allowed. So everyone will eventually get over the hurt of losing Justin. But uh, you just can't switch teams. You know, um, by the, the way, only Alexis, thing I feel. The only Alexis thing Jade I fear, is- I'm sorry, let me step on. No, 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 no I, I'm just saying Alexis Jade is in the uh, chat room and hi. We She's been on with us before. On. Yes, she has. I, I just, I fear the first interception that he throws at, at Soldier Field, presumably if we draft uh, the kid from USC, which I, you think it's got to be Caleb Williams, right? Uh, yes. If the first time he, if he gets a, like picked on the first possession or something, 
He's yeah. going to take a lot of booze. So you got to be ready that he has to know that he's replacing a guy that the majority of the fan base indelibly remembers and will like and has passion for. And they will like you too if you play well. Absolutely. But the first amount of struggle, people are going to be on him. I hope he knows that. Well, you know what? Uh, we dismiss Cliff's post about if, if, if. But I had this thought today, and I pushed it out of mind. I was going to tweet it out, and I said, you know what? I probably will get my ass kicked. But I'll, I'll say it here verbally. What happens if Caleb Williams in the first game has a season-ending oh, injury. Oh, don't say it. No. I don't. have to say it. But wouldn't it be Then you trade that? back with Fields, trade for Fields. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and Pose has the, what? what? What do you want for Fields? A, a first-round draft pick? Okay, it's on its way. You know, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? This is my life as a Bears fan. It's a nightmare. <laughs> oh, man. Like, there's... That, that can't happen. It just can't happen. <laughs> Please, no, God, don't do this to us. <laughs> then if... if Poles if, has to draft if, him, though, Aldo. He has to. Like, if we're, if he trades fields and then trades the pick, and then we have a shitty year with a shitty quarterback, I'm not calling Bajan a shitty quarterback, but whomever would be the leader and then they don't go anywhere, like Mark Rippon's nephew we signed or whatever. Like, yeah. who, whomever, yeah, and then he would lose his job. If he trades away the most popular quarterback for on the, according to the players, they all they all seem to love him, and and a lot of the fans love him. And you trade him and then don't take Caleb Williams, he'll lose his job. He knows it. There's no way. Yeah, I I agree with you. I agree. I you know I uh, I, I I think. One of the thoughts I also had as I've been thinking about this whole Caleb thing is that if look at Shorty, <laughs> although it has the best bushes, if you, if you don't he's know talking about story, where he peed in the bushes. <laughs> if you don't know the story, like Dan just said, Mr. Shorty was over at the house and when he left, he had a few drinks. He uh, peed in the bushes. <laughs> I was so hoping he, he didn't have. He didn't have like some kind of inside info on what your manscaping area is. <laughs> <laughs> no, and see, so he sends me a three hundred dollar gift certificate to Gibson Steakhouse, and it was like one of the best meals I've ever had in my life. Thank you very much, Mister Shorty. And now he's sending me ten dollars. Listen, uh, come over and shit on my lawn, please. <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll get better grass and. You know, I'll get another three hundred dollars from you. <laughs> <laughs> how how did that go over with Mrs. Gandhi? And now that he's given the money, oh, she loves him. She said she, <laughs> she was she was like, should we cancel the fertilizer company? <laughs> When's Mister Shorty back in town? <laughs> oh, that is wild. Um, so anyway, I uh, oh well, the one thing I want to say before I forget, we uh, Tuch is uh, preparing to join us here in, in just a couple of minutes. Um, if Caleb Williams leads the Chicago Bears to a Super Bowl win in his rookie season, oh, that then would you attend church with me? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> are you, are you Catholic? To... Are you Catholic? I, I am Catholic, but I've not been a practicing uh, religious person for years. But I figure if it happens, I'm going to church. You, yeah. you can come with me. <laughs> My dad's side of the family was Catholic. I would go there when I was a kid, and I was like, God, this is strange. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And then my mom would send me the Protestant. I'm like, I, I don't understand what the fuck they're talking about either. But <laughs> if the Bears win the Super Bowl, by God, I'll be at Saturday night mass. That's the way our Catholic church does it. Is that is that yours, Saturday night? Yeah, they have Saturday and Sunday night mass. Oh, I mean, I, I, actually, I don't know for sure because, again, I haven't been to church in, since I was a teenager, I think. I'm going to say something that would be deeply offensive to my family members that are Catholic, but if if the Bears would win the Super Bowl in Caleb's first season, I would let one of the priests fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm screwing you from behind. <laughs> we've let all the Packers, we've let the Packers fuck us for 30 years. Might as well let Catholicism do it too if it led to a Bears Super Bowl. I'll take it. I'm sorry to any of my Catholic buddies who uh, I have offended. I, I'm sorry. Or just member, like religious people in general, 
I do think that's funny. I'm an asshole. I'm sorry. Well, I gotta believe no. that's uh, encouraging to hear, right? <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Santucci on the sound effects. Tucha, give me a nod if you're ready to come in. Yes, indeed. Let's bring in Johnny Santucci. How are you, my friend? Unmute, please. <laughs> dollar, dollar in the jar. <laughs> dollar in the jar. <laughs> How are you, brother? <laughs> okay, got this little cold still or cough. No shit. No, you missed I'm last gonna... week, and you, you still got remnants of it, huh? You know, I, I come on the show, I laugh a lot. <laughs> but, <laughs> surprisingly, I laugh a lot. But, but, you know, it's uh, um, when I laugh, I start to cough sometimes, so f bear with me. You well, know, uh, <clears throat> I'm so happy you're here. Uh, like I told yeah. Dan at the beginning of the show, we we're really looking forward to this state of affairs. You've been on a roll lately. I don't know why. There's nothing going so on with the Bears. <laughs> <laughs> right. One of the greatest off-seasons, despite the fact that many of us are upset or disappointed that Justin Fields will not uh, yeah. fulfill the rebuild. Uh, he'll probably take the Steelers to a, a Super Bowl champion before the Bears get there. But uh, I, wore, I wore my Wanstead polo for Dan tonight. I love that. I love that it's, shirt. It's a somber night, you know. Yeah, I like that. That is yeah. really nice. Nike Jeez. vintage uh, Wanstead polo, Bears polo. <laughs> love it. Love Little it. So you got a good one for us? Bringing the fire tonight. Oh, I love it. The people in the chat room oh, yeah. are like gonna be fired good. up. Uh Stephen Z is oh, saying that Gerald good. Everett is going to wear number 14. Uh, mm. Is that official? Yeah, we well, can't wear seven. That was Hallis's number. Yeah. That's right. right. That's right. Uh, I liked when tight ends wore 80s, man. I, I no, you know. I, I liked others oh, an 80. Yeah, okay. It's, that's the tight end. You know? Yeah, you know, it's weird because Tom Brady complained when they made this switch in the numbers. He says, this is bad for quarterback play. What the hell are they doing? And I guess it's yeah. it, it helps the quarterbacks identify a position group. So, you know, because yeah. they can't, you know, they 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 look at the number to identify, you know, who it is that's blitzing and stuff. So uh, it is a bit of an issue, no doubt. Hey, before he starts Bear State of Affairs, from Adam Hogue, USC's Pro Day will be live on NFL Plus at 1230 Central. Uh, on Wednesday, and then NFL Network at 7 p.m. Central. So mm. if any of us listening or watching wants to see what Caleb's up to tomorrow, you have those opportunities. And I got an announcement to make, uh, too, is uh, Connor Morissette reported today, he is from uscfootball.com, that Ryan Poles is already there in Southern California with the contingent of Bears people, and... Connor Morissette is going to be our guest tomorrow on Draft on Tap. He is going to be at the Pro Day, so he's going to let us know what he saw and what he heard. So that is going to be outstanding. Draft on Tap with Danny Shimon tomorrow night and Connor Morissette. I have one more is, thing. I, I'm please, sorry. No, one no, more thing before Tooch gets started because I want to shut up and hear his great Bear State of Affairs segment here. Maybe he can give us 10 or 12 minutes since he mentioned, missed last week. Uh, the, the, I was just going to ponder to both of you though, if you're the bears contingency, do you, are you already working on a deal? You know, that's a great question. Uh, because we've seen that happen before. <laughs> there he is. That's a photograph from today, huh? At the airport. Flying coach. The <laughs> bears are so cheap. <laughs> they just stopped to get some Garrett's popcorn. Ready for the flight now in United. <laughs> Yes, Ravi, tomorrow is the pro day. And to answer Dan's question, yeah, you know, I think when somebody is drafted number one, you can't start negotiations on a contract for that person. So that yep. I, I think that's a big part of this because we know that uh, Caleb wants to totally change what the players union, union has agreed with with the Chicago Bears. There's been rumors that he might want part ownership and stuff like that. I, I don't think that's true. But he's going to, you know, this guy thinks he's going to be the next biggest thing since fucking, what's the last biggest thing we had? Taylor Swift. Um, and so <laughs> it, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how those negotiations go. That he, he is obligated to follow the CBA and his salary is going to be fixed. But will he still make things a little tougher? We'll see. He better not hold out. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, he better not because it's uh, it really will be Tyson Page in time. <laughs> it's the Bears. He's going to hold yeah. out. 
If he holds out, the Bears fans will fucking hate him. Oh, that's the thing. I was wondering. Remember when Trubisky showed up to the United Center? He was booed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I booed him. I was and Justin him. was cheered universally when he got drafted. Yeah, exactly. So if he holds out or if he, you know, Dan sent me a uh, a tweet today from a, a fake Adam Schefter account. What was it that it said, Dan? It said that. A fake Adam Schefter account. Yeah, well, it said Adam Schefter at first. It looked real. And I was like, I, this has to be fake. But it said that Caleb Williams insists that he will not make eye contact with his teammates until he earn, they earn his respect. I'm like, oh my God, if he's saying this, like he's the biggest narcissist that we've ever seen. But so I immediately went to Schefter's account to see if it was real and I couldn't find it. And then uh, Dan sends me, I don't think this is real. I've been scrolling through Schefter's. <laughs> yeah, it's not. So he's not that big of an asshole. Anyway. Oh, thank God. Uh, but speaking of big assholes, it's time for Johnny Santucci <laughs> <laughs> State of Affairs. Here no we go, baby. Assholes this week. <laughs> All right, Bears State of Affairs, man. All right, NFL week, NFL offseason week eight. What's happening, Barflies? Well, it finally happened. Yeah. It's finally over. The Bears they traded. <laughs> the Bears traded Justin Fields to the Steelers on Saturday, closing this chapter in the long saga of decision game. I got an updated graphic, Aldo. Oh, like look at that. you! I the like it. X. The Very red well X. Done. No more. No more. No more. John. <laughs> That's high quality, high tech graphics, Aldo. <laughs> it looks like you use spray paint over Justin yeah, a little, Fields. <laughs> a little spray paint, he's gone. <laughs> it's a Puerto Rican graphic. I can say oh, that because I'm Puerto Rican. I can say. No, that. you're I'm not. Puerto you're a white guy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah the the uh, the former 11th overall pick in the 2021 draft will now back up Russell Wilson in Pittsburgh. And he'll replace Mitchell Trubisky for a second time in his career. Yeah. The Bears GM Ryan Poles wanted to do right by Fields. And give him a choice of teams where he could get a fresh start. And while Poles had other possibly better offers for the fourth-year quarterback, he settled on Fields' choice of the Steelers for a 2025 conditional six-round pick. A six-round pick seems awfully light for an NFL quarterback with three years of NFL experience and breakaway speed. It's kind of like trading him for a practice squad punter. After all, <laughs> Bears fans will remember the Bears gave up two first round picks, a fourth and a fifth, to trade up nine spots to draft Justin Fields, only to trade him away for a sixth round pick three years later. That's the kind of management Bears fans can expect from the Bears. Yeah, these are the kind of decisions that drive a lot of Bears fans crazy. That's why fans consider the Bears to be one of the least competent franchises in the NFL, whether it's ownership, management, or coaching. Bears fans could say that Ryan Poles got fleeced again by Omar Khan and the Steelers, and they'd be right, considering mm -hmm. the fact that the Steelers GM pawned off Chase Claypool on the Bears for a second-round pick that turned out to be the 32nd overall pick in last year's draft. The Bears would quickly part ways with Claypool sending him to the Dolphins for a fifth-round pick in the 2024 draft. And if Bears fans want to say that Justin Fields has no value, wait until they see how many job offers Matt Eberflutes gets after he's eventually let go by the Bears. <laughs> but, really, <laughs> but really, why are we celebrating? I'm not sure we should be celebrating the apparent ineptitude and mismanagement of the Bears franchise. We traded away arguably the best quarterback we've had in years for next to nothing in order to take another gamble on another as of yet unproven quarterback. We're back in the Bears cycle of futility, Aldo. Like I put a little there reference put a little reference up in the left corner. That's where Just we are, right there. Let, let, let the you know where we are. Give up on first round quarterback. Draft first round quarterback. We're on we're on the cusp of drafting another first round quarterback. Yeah, all right. So now we know where we're at. Here. Bears fans could argue that 
Bears are simply doing what they've always done, mismanaging the quarterback position. So again, why are we celebrating? It seems like if you're celebrating because Justin Fields is gone, you're missing the forest for the trees. This franchise hasn't been worthy of our celebration in nearly 40 years. Think about it. We're celebrating a new era, okay, but it's possible that it's just another stage of the Bears cycle. If you're celebrating the fact that Justin Fields is finally gone, don't forget about the shitty hand the great kid was dealt by a franchise that might be the most incompetent franchise in the NFL. What the Bears did around Justin Fields was horrible. Year one, planned to sit him all year, but start him on short notice against the NFL's best defense in week three in Cleveland, where he was sacked nine times, and Dan and Alder were mistaken for gay lovers. <laughs> true story. <laughs> very, that probably, very true. Uh, <laughs> that probably happens more often than we think, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Year two, make the team worse in every way during a tank season that ended with the Bears getting the number one overall pick in the 2023 draft. And year three, you have one year to prove yourself, kid, with a roster that was year one of a rebuild. I've always said that Fields was the victim of bad timing. The Bears set him up to fail, and he failed. He was the quarterback who presided over a tank year and a rebuild year during a time when the Bears franchise was still recovering from trading up to draft Trubisky over Mahomes. That's what you get when you hire rookie GMs and rookie coaches who have to learn on the job. I'm glad Justin Fields is getting a fresh start in Pittsburgh. He's a great dude. His teammates obviously love him, and he got a raw deal in Chicago. I wish him a long, successful career. He'll still be that quarterback who wanted to win so bad for the Bears, he was willing to take an unholy beating on the field. Uh, Justin Fields' devotion in Chicago is probably pretty confusing to outsiders. But it's simple. He made a lot of incredible plays for a fan base that's been starved for good quarterback play for 95% of their lives. It's hard to ignore that. The problem is there's a lot of bad plays in between the incredible plays that fans overlooked because of how high the highs were and how quarterback starved this franchise is. Usually, a number one overall pick steps into a mess. That won't be the case for whichever quarterback the Bears decide to take. If the Bears do, in fact, draft Caleb Williams, he'll step in arguably the most talented roster the Bears have had in five years. They'll get to throw to two Pro Bowl receivers, and DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. I love it. (laughs) I honestly can't remember. I love it. (laughs) He really likes it. I love it. (laughs) So do I. I love it. (laughs) <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this will get this will get edited in post, folks. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, I honestly can't remember a time in Bears history where the Bears had two Pro Bowl receivers starting across from each other. But I bet Bear Room, Bar Room historian Dan Aguirre could tell us. In fact, he got pretty close with Conway and Jeff Graham earlier tonight. This is why a lot of Fields fans are upset. Because with this team, Justin Fields could have had his best career year. Everything the Bears did wrong for Justin Fields, they've done right for Caleb Williams. It sucks for Justin Fields that it happened this way. But Poles has basically spent two years setting up the next guy after Fields to where if he fails, it won't be because the franchise failed him. The circumstances dictate the success of a player in the NFL. And Justin Fields was a victim of circumstances. If the Bears had, say, the 12th overall pick, they wouldn't be moving on from Justin Fields. But because Mm -hmm. they hold the number one overall pick, and this year there's a quarterback with the talent to possibly alter this franchise's trajectory, the Bears had to move on from Justin Fields. I get it. Ryan Poles decided in the end to take a swing on drafting a quarterback who might be the next quarterback to lead his team to multiple Super Bowls in the NFL. It was an unpopular decision in the Bears' locker room. But you know what? Winning cures everything. What's important is that decision gate might soon be over. As we know, it's wrought havoc on Bears fans. I promise to show you just how decision gate is affecting Bears fans on X. And the post fields era is no exception. Yeah. Nicely done. Can't sleep. Bears future on the line from (laughs) Bragsy. He's not getting any sleep, although. 
<laughs> Jesus. Or I'm not I getting went, any sex either. <laughs> I went to look on his <laughs> I went to look on his page recently and oh no. He had enough. These tweets are protected. Swifty. Swifty. Oh come, no. Swifty. Come back, Swifty. <laughs> I love Swifty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we we all can't wait for this to be over. As for the Bears and Caleb Williams, expectations should be the same as they were for Justin Fields when he was a rookie. But if Caleb throws for 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, beats the Packers twice, and leads the team to 11 or more wins, Bears fans will forgive this franchise as many foibles. And that mm-hmm. is Bears State of Affairs. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my video? Not that one. I'll get fixed the post. <laughs> That's nice it. job. There's the nice. Yeah. Another another home run. Another a touchdown. Of, a lot of stuff going on. You know, I I uh I sat in on Barfly Tailgate. I was telling Aaron Kurtz, like, who's your inside sources, man? You planned this perfectly. You know, it's uh the day the day after uh the day after uh, Fields is traded, a little tailgate was set up months in advance. <laughs> after, yeah. Come back from break right right after Justin Fields is traded. So you know, I was sick, is- I was on the road. I figured I gotta sit in on this one. What is this question from uh, Mr. Shorty? Why was Mooney so good last year, and now this year it was DJ Moore and Mooney disappeared? Because Justin is a two-read quarterback that that does not see the entire field. Anyone want to argue with uh, Shorty on that? Guess not. Nope. <laughs> it's hard why, to argue. Oh, why was Mooney so good? So good? He wasn't good last year, though. Well, well, what he meant is in 2022. Yeah, the year or before. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look. Uh, I I would just say that it's you can't, again we can't blame everything on Fields, man, because a lot of times and JT O'Sullivan pointed this out the the offensive scheme was a little I don't know out there or weird or and there were times when uh, uh thank you Mark there were times when uh, receivers were running in the wrong place like JT O'Sullivan why is this guy here what's he do he's supposed to run this route and you know so mm-hmm. I mean. Man, can I respond to that real quickly too? I, I, again, I'm no, I'm not breaking down the tapes. I'm not trying to pound my chest and say, I'm an expert. I can say that it appeared from my novice eye that Mooney half-assed a lot of his routes. He seemed to be running yeah. at less than full speed. He always had body language that said like he was pissed off or whining whenever the ball didn't get thrown to him or whenever he dropped passes, he never like owned up to it. He single-handedly lost the Browns game. Like, man, that's not Justin's fault. This dude has been, uh, to me, was giving us half effort the last two years. If that makes me a dick, I'll own it. Look, man, it, it all it, it depends on your philosophy. Look, coaches are there to coach players, you know, and coach them to be in the right position, coach them to read the play, coach them to do whatever. You know, we weren't in the locker room. I mean. Mooney would have dropped it, Dan. Uh, he would have dropped it. I, I'm not going to blame. I'm not going to blame 100% of everything on on uh, 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 Justin Fields, like a lot of delusional Bears fans will do, because it's it's a com- it's football's a team sport, man. Even Mike mm-hmm. North was blaming uh, Justin Fields for a ten inch weight twenty eight record today. I mean, that's not all on him. I told you, man. He he presided over the tank year with a roster. Mm-hmm. I, name me one starter on that roster, the tank year that could start on another team. Certainly not the offensive line. One, just one. Just give me one. Maybe Jalen Johnson. Yeah, yeah, Jalen that, Johnson. That's it, one guy. Yeah. Well, you know, and I th- I think that we got to remember that Mooney was coming off that ankle injury, and I think that, you know, he wasn't running his routes to perfection. Rooney all, uh, Mooney also revealed that he mistook – this was this was in 2022 – that he heard the play and thought it was a play from the previous coaching staff and, and ran the wrong route because what he heard was very close 
to the play. So that told me, dude, are you fucking 100% in the moment and totally listening to what your quarterback is calling? And they had such a great connection, Justin Fields and Mooney. I don't think that, you know, Fields was going to say, yeah, fuck you. I'm not, I'm just going to throw the DJ now. I do agree that Fields has to improve in terms of his progressions. Once he gets past DJ Moore and once he gets past Cole Komet, uh, that it, it was gone, you know, and he couldn't make that third con, uh, mm-hmm. connection. But well, I tank, think he, he was would running have for better. his life. He was running for yeah. his life in the tank year. And he let's played. not forget he was running for his life so much he ran for a thousand yards. Let's mm-hmm. not forget Darnell Mooney dropping the the again the game winner in Cleveland, but he also lost the game in Washington. Yeah, on that Thursday night game, or maybe that one was in that was in Chicago actually, but we lost on the Thursday in twenty twenty two in like week five to the commanders because Mooney dropped that fourth down pass and didn't get in the end zone. So I, I, I don't fuck him. Well, I'm glad he's gone. Fuck him. Look, man, the, the six round pick has nothing to do with Justin Fields talent. He chose the Steelers. Mm-hmm. He, uh, Brian Poles as a favor to the kid, let him pick the team where he wanted to go. The Steelers were offering Jack shit, you know, right. it's not, not, not it, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, yeah. Ryan Poles has shown that when it comes to trades, sometimes he makes some fucked up moves. You know, the Chase Clay thing, yeah. a second rounder for Chase. You know, I know you were in a bidding war with the Turned game. out to be a first rounder. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, um, it, 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 there's a part of why we only got a six rounder for Justin, which could turn out to be a fourth rounder. Yeah. And he's uh, out of contract. When he's out of contract, right. Who, it's, who's going to give up a first-round pick for a kid that you got assigned to 20 to $40 million a year? doesn't great make point. any sense. Great you know, point. It, it, it's, not, it's not, you know, uh, as it, it, it's, it, there's nuance to this whole thing. We're, the we're the all, fact that we only got a six-rounder. We're, we're not blaming Justin Fields? Come on. I just, it's about 33% for everybody, man. Management. Yeah. Ownership, it, I, I'm, I'm probably it's probably more than like twenty percent. Right, Fields not being a good, he, but he coaching. They didn't coach him up. The receivers not being coordinated by a coordinator who knew what he was doing. The coaches mm-hmm. giving up fourth quarter leads with their conservative game plan. You know, management hiring rookie GMs and coaches. Come on, it all it all adds up, man. We haven't drafted. Remember, when I gave a list of all of our draft picks for like the past twenty years, and mm-hmm. everywhere we missed the first round. Oh. Yes, yes. You know, I mean, come on, people. J2K makes a good point that gets he came from an offense where the quarterback force fed uh, Devontae Adams. And that was what Aaron Rodgers did. And when, you know, he, he, he and, and so he tried to turn Justin Fields into that, too. So there's a lot of reasons why that was. I think a lot of people are being unfair towards Peyton, I mean, to, towards uh, uh, Justin Fields. But if he fails in Pittsburgh, then you guys can come back and say, listen, uh, we were right, and I will back down. I, I still have more confidence in Justin Fields yeah. than I think a lot of people do. Who would have thought that the game I was at in week four, again, you were supposed to be there, but you had the the, the bum arm surgery, uh, and you couldn't raise your arm and couldn't go. But who would have thought Denver at Chicago – I'm at that game. If you had told me, hey, next season, Russell Wilson and Justin Fields will be on the same team in Pittsburgh. Wow. It's the irony. Look, yeah. We're, uh, we're, uh, we're, it just happened, man. We're not going to let it go. We've got to talk about it. Come mm-hmm. on. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It, it, yeah. We're not, it doesn't you mean know, we're, we're not wanna... ready to move on. Yeah. Well, I've already I'm... moved on, man. I, I like, I love Caleb Williams, man. Yeah. I love the way he fights in the pocket, man. He's not, he's not a guy that's going to first run scramble. He fights to stay alive in the pocket, man. His arm is electric. You know, I said this on Barfly Tailgate. I mean, mm-hmm. we can be excited now. What sucks is, is the raw deal that Justin Fields got for the team, man. I just laid it mm-hmm. out in Bear State of Affairs. You know, yeah. he got shafted. I'm so yeah. happy that it's over, though. I, yeah. didn't want, I didn't want Fields to be traded, obviously, for a sixth-round pick. But I'm just glad we don't have to keep speculating what if and what's going to happen. We don't have to keep having those shows. And we we know. I mean, it's not what the outcome I wanted, but I accept it. And again, like Tooch said, you know, hey, Caleb's my guy now. Don't fuck it up and, and, and draft the wrong guy. 
Draft Caleb Williams. I'll get his jersey. I'm on to the next. I don't, I don't listen to Chicago media. And I, I, they're, they're not good, Chicago media. <laughs> Park yeah, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't have a problem. I, I, I don't have care, a problem with those guys. Less what, I, don't, I couldn't care less what they think or say. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to yeah, like you know, it, Holmes, but but everybody's entitled to their opinion, and so if the media feels yeah. it's time to move on from Fields, fine. I, I you know, it, it, you and, got no and choice that's what's going to happen, right? That's what's going to happen. No so it, it, it's fine. Uh, I I I want to switch the conversation because people are talking about Caleb, Caleb, Caleb. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about Caleb. And so I've got some video here that I want to share with everyone. And uh, so I want to, uh, if you guys can give me four minutes to run through this video. Let me see how I'm going to do this. Okay, so um, this is, and I'm going to go full frame here. This is Caleb Williams' first game in the big stage. He had played... Two ga- in two games for Oklahoma yeah, he prior was on to Oklahoma. this game. He wasn't on USC yet. Right. And so um, he played in two games. He had just about four or five pass uh, attempts against some lowly college football teams. But in this game against Texas on the big stage, this is where he really opened some eyes. The um, Oklahoma was down. And again, that's – that's uh, 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 Caleb's team, they're down by three touchdowns at the beginning of the second quarter. Lincoln Riley, the head coach of Oklahoma, says, okay, I'm going to put you in. And Caleb says, Caleb said this, the legend of Caleb begins. Now, a lot of people might think this is, you know, uh, uh, bodacious for him to say that, but it's the confidence that he has in himself. So he says, the legend of Caleb begins, and on this fourth down and one play, they put him in because he's a good running quarterback. The the football. It's a keeper all the way, makes a cut, dances free, and look out! Caleb Williams in the secondary! They're trying to run him down! Dimes! Touchdown, Oklahoma! 66 yards on fourth and a foot. So now they, they've they shortened that lead by, of three touchdowns down to two on that 66-yard touchdown round. Shane Rattler, by the way, was the starter. And you see, oh, I uh, accidentally hit the uh, back button. <laughs> he scores this dramatic touchdown, and this is the start of one of the most incredible comebacks in college football, particularly against these two rivals, Texas and Oklahoma. So uh, we're going to move forward here and we're going to see um, what's the situation here. Okay. So here it is. Rattler goes back into the game and he fumbles, he fumbles. And so it is now 35 to 17 in the second quarter. And it's like, Holy shit. Got to put Caleb in. Lincoln Riley has to choose between these two quarterbacks. Uh, Rattler played a little bit because they changed quarterbacks, but it was basically Caleb's game. And so he starts to matriculate the game, the, the team downfield. Sets up a couple of field goals. Uh, this is another pass play. He sets up so quickly, has that wide base, and has that great arm that he fires. Um this is now it's 41 to 23. Oklahoma has scored a couple of touchdowns. It's a third down play. And the, the, uh, as you can see, the play clock is at double zeros. Um, our guy Caleb fumbles the ball because he was trying to get the center to hike the ball, hike the ball. So he took his eye off of it and he makes this great play after that mistake. Fires this bullet in between two cornerbacks, two defensive backs for the touchdown, and he is fucking fired up. Here's a replay from the other angle. You can see he's saying, come on, come on, get me the fucking ball. He finds a gap in that defensive pass rush and fires this ball in between those defenders, and all of a sudden now the lead has been chopped some more. There's the fired up Caleb Williams. I love it. Then – 41 to 30. It's a 11 point game. And early in the fourth quarter, another third down play. He escapes the blitz. He throws it downfield. You can say he just threw it up. He did, but he came down with it. A big play. They get a field goal, and it's now 33 
to 41. They get the ball back, but Again, it's another third down. This time it's third down and 19. And look at what happens. Plenty of time, steps up, watches downfield for Mims. Diving catch! No signal. Touchdown! Are you kidding me? What a play! That's as good as a throw that you will see. Now, in the last minute of uh, regulation, it's 48 to 48. Shane Rattler actually came in and got the two-point conversion. And now they're just trying to get, with 30 seconds to go in the game, they're just trying to get into field goal range. And here goes Caleb at work. Sets that back foot, fires down. They pick up a big first down. They're very close to the field goal. Caleb again fires the ball to this t his big tight end who picks up another first down with 10 seconds left they have enough time because of a timeout they have enough time to call another play and get a little closer but the running back takes it all the way in for a touchdown and it's one of the greatest comebacks in college football history texas oklahoma and caleb's numbers look like this in this 55 to 48 win completed 16 passes 25 attempts 212 yards two touchdowns he rushed four times 88 yards for one touchdown that's your new quarterback guys that's his very first game and so yeah. I, I i hope to over the next few weeks pick out a couple of other games that can get us excited yeah. about the potential of this guy he can play he, he's got a lot of the same attributes yep. as Justin Fields. He fumbles a bit. You know, he, 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 he likes to hold the ball too long and so forth. But he's got some excellent athleticism. Big and question. Almost, Big yes. question. I got to piss, but I want to hear the answer. Then I got to go take a leak. Sure. So he's at Oklahoma there as, as I'm not a country or country. I'm not a country <laughs> fan. No, I'm not a college football fan. So why is he in USC? Why did he transfer? Followed, Do we know the answer? His, followed his coach he, to USC in the transfer portal. Okay. Exactly. His coach left to coach USC, and he said, I'm going with this coach because he loves me and I love him. Yeah. Uh, go, go take a piss and bring us back All a right. sample. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what do you think about that, uh, Tooch? The, uh, well, I, what you see? I, I like Caleb. I mean, look, people are saying, "Oh, polls might still might not." He's taking Caleb Williams. Man, it'd be stupid not to. I mean, come on, you have to after all this drama. You know, there's no. I, I don't think any of the other quarterbacks are as good as Caleb Williams in this draft. You know, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I love I love me some JJ McCarthy. I think JJ McCarthy is going to be a good player. But uh, you have to weigh whether or not uh, you want the draft hall and taking JJ McCarthy. Or you want Caleb Williams and maybe trying to trade back with a few of those other picks, you know? But uh, for me, I would I would take Caleb, and then if I can't trade at nine, I'm taking Jared Verse. I'm getting the defensive rookie of the year. I'm getting the offensive rookie of the year. Yeah. Uh, no, sorry, David. <laughs> Look, I, my whole thing is I, I I've said before, David on uh, uh, David. I said on, on Bear State Affair. I don't give a fuck. I just don't want people to re write history the wrong way. That field sucked without any fucking context. That's what I'm all about because I laid it out in Bear State Affair. Bear State Affairs, he got a, a raw deal. He had a lame duck season with Matt Nagy where he was thrown into a game versus NFL's best defense. Aldo and Dan were gay and he got sacked nine times. Right? Yeah, and then next, right. next year was the, I mean, without the Dan and Aldo, they're not gay. Uh, year two was a tank. <laughs> Year two. <laughs> year two was a tank year where nobody could fucking start on another team except maybe Jalen Johnson. Okay. Yeah. And you want to say he sucks. I'm saying I haven't seen enough because Geno Smith in year seven is thrown for three, 4,000 yards under Shane mm -hmm. Waldron. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. Maybe it takes Justin Fields a lot longer, but you can't deny that he could run for an 80 yard touchdown. He's thrown some uh, amazing long passes, but yeah, he was. He didn't get good coaching. He can't read a defense yet, and he doesn't. He he bails too fast before finding the second, third progressions. You know, he he tried to hang in there and take a beating. You know, and then mm -hmm. third year he had DJ Moore to throw to. That's it. The th remember, don't you remember in the in the tank year the offensive line was terrible. It was horrible. He was getting pressured at two point four five seconds. Yep. Come on, a, now now exactly Caleb, right. the thing is that like Caleb Williams is going to step into a great situation. With an approved offensive line, two Pro Bowl receivers, good two good tight ends to throw to. He's got DeAndre Swift now to hand off to and throw in the flat. You know, he's got mm -hmm. Khalil Herbert, Roshan Johnson. 
the, the offensive line should be a lot better than what we had in the tank year. You know, it's still mm-hmm. the offensive line still has some questions, in my opinion. But yeah, uh, uh, Caleb Williams is is the. I mean, Justin Fields was was uh, the bridge quarterback. Sad to say. Yeah, you know? oh, no, it's sad to it's say. A, you're right. It was the it was the bridge quarterback. He was an expensive fucking bridge quarterback. Yeah, you know, an expensive yeah, because- bridge quarterback. We traded up. Uh, Ryan Pace traded up to two get two first Justin round Fields. picks, a fourth and a fifth, and then we traded him in three much? years. Yeah, and we traded him in three years for a for a sixth round conditional pick. That's just gross negligence on the part of a franchise. Mm-hmm. You know, gross. We're negligence. still we're still divided in the chat room. Lots of people think that you know we're giving Fields too much credit. A lot of people are saying uh, you know uh, Caleb uh, Williams is going to suck and stuff. So uh, only time will <laughs> tell how this plays out. My my hope and my goal is that both quarterbacks play outstanding football. And does uh, a lot of people still want freaking Tyson Bajan to start? All right, let's build around Tyson Bajan. How you feel about that, Nano? <laughs> is that the guy? I yeah, mean, come on! Don't give, don't give me stupid comments like this. Bajent, uh is going to have a good NFL career. Can he become a number one quarterback? He'll have to progress mightily, but what he a, has shown that he is how, really how did he crap out of Chicago. The kid was nothing but class the whole time he was here. Yeah, I don't get Respectful. that. Respectful. This is uh, uh, Judah Tribe who just uh, hates go, Justin go back, Fields. Go back to your bong, Judah. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm going to put him on a timeout because Judah, <laughs> I've seen I've seen your uh, show, Judah, and it, it's distasteful. The things that you say, uh, how you throw at, uh, uh, around insults, and uh, I don't think they're funny. And you're really not welcome here. I won't ban you, but uh, just go away for a while. Don't want to see your comments. <laughs> um, flat Earth uh, Judah, that's him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. You know, I, I, you know, I, I, I want to give everyone the benefit of that. Yeah, Some people are going to, you know, we, we thank you, George. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, That's a great let, point from George. Let me, let me say one thing. And I, it, it almost made bare state of affairs. Was that Mr. But- Sulu? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it almost, it almost made in my notes, it almost made bare state of affairs. I had written this down. I still don't understand why you keep Matt Eberflus and trade Justin Fields. You know, if, mm-hmm. if you're if you're serious about Caleb Williams and developing, you know, why do you have Matt Eberflus still around? Yeah, You know, he's not he's not an offensive mastermind. You know, it would have been it would have been better to hire one of these other guys who were out there like uh, I forgot what's the Kubiak or, you know, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm hoping that Eberflus is that guy because, of course, we're Bears fans and we want that yeah. to happen. But in reality, he, he doesn't have the aura of a Super Bowl coach. And when you look at Super Bowl teams, all of these coaches are like, you know, a step away from being in the Hall of Fame. Bill Belichick, Andy Reid, all of these coaches who have made multiple Super Bowl appearances – they're not at all like Eberflus. And maybe Eberflus is going to grow yeah. into the role. You know, his wife has been dressing him. He's got the cool beard now. Maybe he's going to become somebody we haven't seen these first two seasons. But I don't have a lot of hope. And, again, I'll say it like I said earlier in the show. He's defensive first, and so he puts handcuffs on these quarterbacks. Don't fumble. Don't don't uh, throw interceptions. Be careful with the ball. It's like, dude, back off. Let these quarterbacks play. Let them make yep. mistakes. That's the only way they're going to progress, you know? Yep. So yep. hopefully Eberflus changes. I mean, K- Caleb Williams has a better arm than Justin Fields. You know, there's no mm-hmm. there's no question. I would agree with that. There's no question. Uh, Justin Fields has, uh, you know, more size, more speed, you know, mm-hmm. could throw a nice deep ball too. Maybe we saw it when he was at Ohio State, you know? But uh, Caleb Williams, man, I'm excited. I love it, man. I I, I can't wait to see the kid play. I mean, look, when I was a kid, I was a fan of Fran Tarkenton, Aldo. And yep. uh, uh, Caleb too. Williams reminds me a lot of Fran Tarkenton. If you watch Fran Tarkenton play, when he's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of Fran and Caleb. They run around Fran? all the time and not leave not leave the pocket. He would run around, run around. Yes. Had, had, a, had the same kind of arm as Caleb. Yes. You know, Do 360s, like, you know, yeah. juke out a defensive lineman, all yep. while looking downfield to complete a pass. He rarely yep. ran downfield for yards. He would just 
run around to give himself some more time. Francis Asbury Tarkenton loved to him as be the contrarian on Franny. Okay. If he plays just bad and not fucking awful against Pittsburgh, the Vikings win Super Bowl yeah. nine. Yep. I mean, game. he was atrocious in that game. I know it's the steel curtain broke, defense. Broke my heart. Fran was terrible in that game. He was okay against the Dolphins, but Miami was just a better team. But Minnesota arguably was better than Pittsburgh that year, and he just shit the bed. And then against Oakland, you know, whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, I can't take anything away from Fran. But in the biggest moment, I hope Caleb's better than Fran in the clutch. Let's just yeah, say I that. Mean, look, my my mom's side of the family is from Minneapolis. They, there was a big when I was a little kid, they would one side of the family wanted to be a, me to be a Vikings fan. The other side of the family wanted me to be a Bears fan. Yeah. I, I, they put me in a full Fran Tarkenton jersey when I was five years old, six years old. I run around the backyard, you know, throwing the ball around, all that stuff. You know who I like is Joe Cap, who actually died recently. But Joe Cap was uh, the guy that took them to Super Bowl four. That's the guy I like. He threw the ball without the laces. He just ran people over. Just big and burly and like over. Oh, it's like he's playing above his actual talent level. You know, that's the guy I liked from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Bill Pizza Man is going to take a, a little break in the timeout room too because he's saying Justin Fields fans should, should ride steel. Come on, man! It's like uh, this is not that kind of show. We bust balls here, but uh, don't be telling us to go fucking ride steel. I mean, I saw I the comment. What that means. I don't know what it means either, but I saw someone say that you know, 75 percent of the show was about fields. I mean, he was traded on Saturday. This is our first show together exactly. again since the That's trade, so we have to talk about it. I know we have That's to. That. We have to. You know, I, I respect to to Justin. We're moving on. Trust me, we're not going to be talking yeah. about Justin as much next week. And by the time the season rolls along, we'll barely mention him. Uh, so. You know, give us give us some time to make that transition. It, it's a good. It's thing. newsworthy. It's newsworthy. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, if he's half, if he's half as good as Fran Tarkenton, I'll be very happy. Mm -hmm. That's how you. Fran Tarkenton oh, threw for over yeah. forty thousand yards, man. Yeah. He's an NFL Hall of Famer. You yeah, know, he paid exactly. seventeen years in the NFL. And, and Dan, when you say he never won the big game, you know, but wasn't weren't those like team losses? And, and I, you know, Bud Grant. No, was not a great that coach. Pittsburgh one. Not that Pittsburgh one. Fran was terrible. Go back and watch I, Super Bowl nine. Yeah, I yeah, will give you that because the that was Steelers a great were defense. That was one of the greatest yeah. defenses of all time, though. If he's exactly. just awful and not atrocious, I'm telling you, they win the game. At one point, it's nine to six in the second half. It's not like. They were blown out. It's just Fran was just playing awful, man. He's just terrible. Yeah. A lot of those early Super Bowl games were so fucked up, man. They were just badly played games. It was we'll, like we'll never be able understand. to compare Justin Fields and Caleb Williams to each other. Mm -hmm. Because Caleb or Justin Fields had Luke Getze and Matt, Matt Nagy. And mm -hmm. Caleb Williams is walking into Shane Waldron and two Pro Bowl receivers. So it's gonna look a lot better than Fields. I mean, I'm already. I, you, if you were asking me to bet, I would bet on which player is going to look better next year. It's going to be Caleb Williams. <laughs> Eco Bean asked, "What did Fields do that was so good? How quickly they forget? Man, what about going on, the tank? on a thousand yard rushing? He had he had back to back games with eighty yard touchdown runs. What about Monday Nobody night football? He goes to what? Hold on, hold on, Tooch. Uh, he goes uh, to Washington on Monday Night Football and throws three touchdown passes to DJ Moore. You know that was uh, Thursday. Aldo. To be just to clarify, Thursday. somebody will, somebody will contradict you and say, "Aldo, you don't know." What you're... Go ahead. Thursday night. Thursday yeah. night. Well, and why don't, why don't you give one of your best performances of Justin Fields? <laughs> let's all let's all take a chance here, or an opportunity to to share that this guy was fucking special in many many ways. That was play against Philly. Player? The play against Philly, yes. When he like gets he he go runs through all eleven guys and he yep. scores, but it, it, they mark him out at like the eight or something, and then you know. But my God, and that run against the Packers in twenty twenty two as well, uh, the one against the Dolphins that we were at, he was electric, man. I mean, again, I'm okay with I'll get the Kayla Williams jersey, but it's it's worth acknowledging that Justin had some electric moments. Don't you think? I, I I definitely think so. And I again, how about I'll that play against the Lions last year on fourth down? 
and they fucking they go for it and he throws the ball deep to DJ Moore touchdown you know fucking uh their 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 coach just got Dan just got his extension but man Justin was beating him and it should have beat him in the silver to, or Ford Field too right. if it hadn't been for that drop by 13 yep and uh, it's not uh, just this, this some is, sh- how, how many Chicago times do we fans? have to tell this guy mm-hmm. it's a team sport bro yeah, how many exactly. how many wins was he going to get with that roster to 2022? The the tank year. You uh, could have said many? the same thing about Jordan early yeah. on. You could be like, ah, oh, what about those dunks? Fuck those dunks! Hell, he's losing though. What has he done? I'm not trying to say Fields is Jordan. I'm just saying, but you could have said that about Mike. Is what the, the, the first those, title was? What year six? Year seven? The, those mm-hmm. losses I put on Eberflus, man. Then fourteen losses in a row. Yeah, I, I, you know, you I, have to say would, the same thing for Fields as, as you do Eberflus. I would be you careful know, or, with the Jordan comparison there. Dan. You know, yeah, but you, you get the point. A lot of people were saying that early on that he was all, you know, myth and like, you know, the slam dunk tournament and everything, but it wasn't a winner. Remember? I mean, I, I'm, yeah. I was alive during this era. I mean, people thought he couldn't win the big one. Right. Yeah. Uh, but he was scoring 40 points a game. <laughs> so, well, I'm just saying, uh, but that's the point is he was a, a highlight guy at the time and not yeah. a winner, which was what the other gentleman was saying. Oh, those are highlights. What about wins? So that was the comparison to Jordan is that most of his stuff was just like, ooh, draw, draw drop, jaw dropping, but they're still losing to Isaiah, you know? Yeah, it's, it's very important to note that the, what – uh, Ryan Post has finally been able to build, and this offense would help any quarterback, veteran, Justin Fields, rookie quarterback. Justin never had the benefit of having two superstar quality wide receivers in DJ Moore and uh, and Keenan Allen. And so you got to account for that. And maybe he would have bombed out with Keenan Allen, but I think – that there would have been progression, and it's just a shame that he's not here to to experience all of those benefits that he's going to have around him. Yeah, he's uh, holds a single NFL single game rushing he, record. For a he won a, a NCAA championship, uh, Judah Tribe. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, dude. He 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 has a rib injury, comes out of the game, and then comes back and passes for what was it four five touchdowns. Come on, dude. Yeah. You don't like them. That's fine. But don't fuck it around with facts, dude. This is why I'm not going to let these people rewrite history to fit their narrative. <laughs> you know? Breathe through, says Stephen Me. Hey, we finally hundred- get to see a picture of Stephen Me. What do you think, uh, that's Dan? Not Can you him. take him? <laughs> you don't think so? Oh, uh, God. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'll breathe and not take the Asian. bait on that. <laughs> just play it. Just play well, it. he was so mad at me because I liked Fields. I mean, again, it's like, like, like uh, Mike North was calling us a cult. The people that like Fields. I mean, it's mm. people like Steven who was like trying to start confrontate bullshit confrontations just because somebody else had an opposing opinion. So if we're gonna slam the audience, I'll slam Steven then because again, gratuitous keyboard warrior shit. I'm a tough guy talking from Europe. You know, on a computer. You're going to upset the poor guy again. <laughs> well, I'm just ta- I'm just saying it the way it is, man. I never fucking, like, talked any shit about him until he started in on me for gratuitously just because I liked Fields. So, uh, Muck but, Muck, I got I to gotta address this, guys. These I got to address are, this. Are, are, they, they, no context, Laz, huh? The tank year. How was that roster? 39th ranked fourth quarter quarterback. You know? It's like, come on, dude. 10 and 28 record. Nobody could win with that roster. Three and 14. So, uh, here's what I want to address. Uh, Muck Muck says Jordan Love has absolutely no weapons. That's not true. That's Bullshit, not true. If, I love if those you, hold on. Hold on, Tooch. Yeah. Let me finish. Uh, if you know football, you know that he's got a better offensive coordinator. He's got a guy yeah. who is renowned for designing systems and plays that – really help a, a quarterback. He had the benefit yep. of young wide receivers who are going to be outstanding young oh, yeah. uh, wide receivers in the NFL. Great he point. had an excellent running game and the head a coach relied on the running game. Yep. So a good there's line. a lot of practice and a, and a, and a line. great line yep. and a much better than the Bears. And so had, there's a lot of these other defense, factors. Too. 
you using Jordan Love as an excuse there or as part of your rationale is 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 not going to pass water. There's, guys. there's sorry. four good re- wide receivers on the Packers that are all like second or third year players. Christian Watson, Dottavian Wicks, Jaden Reed, uh, Ro- uh, Romeo uh, Dobbs. Those four guys, man, love on the Bears. Mm-hmm. Even, give me one of them at least as our third wide receiver. Oof, we we're all supposed to come supposed to come together. <laughs> yeah, we're all Bears fans. That's the thing. Like well, I mean, even even with Steven, let me say I that mean, to him because uh, he and I spoke on Facebook as gentlemen before. He just got so angry at me. Well, I mean, we're all Bears fans. Let's just be fucking like I don't want to sound cornball, but goddamn, let's all move forward and like just be Bears fans. We're on the same team. Yeah. And so let's give a little respect to the guy who was our quarterback. He's gone now, and then start thinking about the the future. That's what we're, not we're trying to do. All Bears fans, I you might not be a Bears fan, Judah. I don't know what he means by that. And then you know, right, he maybe he means here. Don Burr. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Did they listen to Bear State of Affairs? You're celebrating an inept franchise and mismanaged a, a, a quarterback situation and came out on the bottom of a lot of draft picks. You know, that's what y'all are celebrating. Okay, we, we'll get Caleb Williams. Fine. That's that's the that's a pretty good consolation prize. You know, and and Fields wasn't Poles guy. I get it. You know, Poles has to take a swing here for a franchise altering quarterback. That's the bottom line. It's a business. But to blame Justin Fields for every single fucking loss, that's ridiculous. You're a fucking it's idiot. It's not fair. It's not fair to No. Uh, you you to, make yourself look like an idiot to me when you do shit like that. You don't take any of the context. And yeah. the, the guy that said he was tuning <laughs> up because of uh, all was just well, but it was ridiculous. I mean, I've said it three times now. I'm getting the Kayla Williams jersey when he's drafted. I mean, what else do I have to say? I can't put the guy, oh, he hasn't played a game yet for the Bears. He hasn't been officially drafted yet. So how, I mean, what am I supposed to say about him? Did you guys Come September, I'll be all on board with him rooting up. What am I supposed to say right now other than I hope he's good? Did you guys, Elmar's got breaking news here. Justin's gone. Yeah. Thanks for the breaking news, buddy. But, hey, hey, Tooch, don't, don't start with the name calling of our followers that's not yeah, the type I'm, of show i don't yep. want i don't want to have that show so if, right. if we're asking them to respect us don't yep. be calling them idiots and names too please don't do that. right that's not the type of show i want to produce or be yep. a part of in any way so uh all right it is the top of the hour we usually devote the last 30 minutes or so to what we have seen on the boob tube streaming and so forth i don't Dan, what have you seen lately that you like? Curb was really good this week. It was one of the funnier ones. Definitely the funniest one of the season. The uh, the painting with him eating the girl's pussy at the end of it. God, that was hilarious. <laughs> with her legs. Oh, that was yeah. so fucking funny. And that is so true. Like, the people will say, ah, I've got trauma and use it as a fucking card and a crutch. So I love that Larry pointed that out. And also the text chain, the text chain. That's so true. When you get in one of those and you're like, ah, stop. My phone's going off every couple of so Stop. I'm trying to sleep. So yeah, that whole episode. And then Leon talking about how great he was. At eating just, just a great episode. Uh, you know, it, it, I, you got to give people a little context when you say that stuff, because a lot of people haven't seen the show. So what happens at the beginning is Larry David is eating. He's he's got this gorgeous girlfriend. She's beautiful, I mean, beautiful. Oh my god, she was beautiful. And so he's eating her out. He's eating her vagina out. And the maid walks in and sees him, and then all of a sudden that just disrupts the entire equilibrium <laughs> of the world. It was so fucking funny. <laughs> and then later in the episode, his tongue is out, and she sees him again, and she's like, "It's calling back to the cunnilingus, you know, just." Oh, it was so good. <laughs> it was good. There was also something that was uh, really funny, uh, and I, I, I'm getting a little confused because I went back and actually started watching shows from previous seasons. Like in season three, uh, him and Ted Danson are opening up a restaurant. Uh, do you recall that season, Dan Aguirre? The only thing I really remember about season three is like Crazy Eyes Killer. Did you remember? <laughs> yeah. Did you get to that episode? He yes, was uh, Wanda Sykes' boyfriend. 
and yes, tells Larry yes. to, he's like, you got to eat the pussy, Larry. And Larry gets one of Cheryl's pubic hair stuck in his throat. <laughs> <laughs> Larry that, and uh, Crazy Eyes Keller kept saying, are you my, are, you know, he's saying, are you my N-word? And Larry's like, are you my Caucasian? You know, I thought that was funny. <laughs> that was funny. When did Leon, what season did Leon join? Season the six, they did um, like a Hurricane Katrina thing where they took in uh, families that were displaced by the storm and it was how he got with uh uh what's her name uh shit she played uh miss black on the show but i can't think of her uh, i can't think of the actress's name anyway uh but they take in a family and then like by episode two or three leon shows up he lives in california but it's he's their family so he wants to move in with them Ah. and uh eventually he does move in obviously and he hasn't moved out since so he steals the show Oh, he every time, and that I I think the HBO people should do a spinoff for him because this is Larry David's last season of Kirby Enthusiasm. If they're smart, they'll figure out one way to uh, to keep him on there. Because you're right, he steals every episode. His stuff is brilliant. It's all ad lib. So I got one more thing. I I told you about Far and Away, and I liked it. Um, back in 1997. I didn't watch it thoroughly, so I tried to go and give this a, a, another attempt. I was a huge fr- fan of The Shining with Kubrick, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, Doctor Sleep, the the sequel. I went back and watched that fucking brain wreck on ABC where the guy from Wings is playing Nicholson's character and uh, the girl from Risky Business is playing Shirley Duvall's character. It was the It was like a six-hour version of The Shining that Stephen King liked. And it was just terrible. I watched it again. Oh, hadn't dude. seen it since 97. Uh, but Shout Factory put out uh, a Blu-ray of it. So I bought it. Spent like $38 on it. It is fucking garbage. Did you all ever see that? The ABC Never. version of The Shining? Never. Uh, uh, I, I know who I started have, it. One, yeah. one of the guys from Made Wings started it. Yeah. 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 Rebecca De Mornay from Risky Business played uh, Shelly, pardon me, Shelly Duvall's character. Right, it was so bad. I mean, like he's instead of the the axe that he's got like a croquet, like whatever you fucking hit the ball with in croquet, a mallet, mallet. I guess. Mallet. Yeah. Oh, it's just so bad. He keeps calling Danny a pup. Where are you, you damn pup? It's just like who wrote this fucking shit? Oh, it's not suspended. Oh, it's so bad. Like Twin Peaks is out in ninety and is a hundred to one by and what what they were doing on that show with David Lynch compared to what seven years later they're doing with The Shining, it's yeah. so bad. It's so bad. I mean, it made Kubrick's version seem like, uh, I mean, just like one thousand to one. Like this is the what this is what you know Stephen King didn't like Kubrick's version. This is his his chance to rewrite history, and it's just it. You talk about a bomb. Oh, it was so bad. Um, I wanted to ask you guys, have you guys seen a movie uh, named Nobody? No, who, who, is, is, who is that? I guess that's that's no, the guy that's, from uh, uh, Saul Goodman from uh, Breaking yeah. Bad. Oh, I didn't Bob I didn't Odenkirk. Know. Bob Odenkirk, there you go. Yeah. I saw a clip of a fight scene. I, I, I didn't pull the clip because I didn't want uh, YouTube to uh, take yeah, us down. But Kirk great... went to my high school. Oh, really? How about that? Yeah, there he's he's a brilliant Nick, comedian. Nick yeah. in this in this movie, he plays a guy who has a dark past that we're not aware of. I, I read it from the summary, and he something happens. Somebody breaks into his house. Members of the mob, Russian mob, and so forth. And so all of a sudden, it rekindles all of his old fighting skills that he hasn't used. And in years. And so there is a fight scene on a bus with Olden Kirk against four or five guys. And it's such a well done scene. It's like, you know, it's it, it's almost believable that he is really <laughs> kicking the ass of these four or five guys because he's getting his ass kicked too, you know. But he knows enough about fighting to eventually win the fight. It's a four or five minute fight scene. It's one of the best fight scenes I've ever seen. Now I I'm dying to watch the entire movie. It's called Nobody. It's on demand. I think on HBO uh, now. Okay. Never underestimate a nobody, and that's apparently what people these these mobsters are doing and. <laughs> Bob Oldenkirk is is really a fucking badass on it. You guys got to check it out. We should all check it out for next week. (laughs) 
Anything else you guys have seen? Or what, yeah, what no, I was going to ask you one more. I had sure. already watched this, but my girlfriend had not. Uh, somehow Cambodia came, Cambodia came up, the you know, the atrocities post-Vietnam. And I was like, ah, oh, did you ever see the killing fields? And, and she said, no, no. And she's, you know, an avid movie watcher too. But she's like, I don't know how I missed this. But I showed her the killing fields on Sunday. Oh. And it's, you know, probably like the 10th time I've seen it in my lifetime. But did you see that, Aldo? I just wanted your opinion on it, if you, if you like Yes, it. I saw it many years ago when it was first released. I remember it stars Sam Waterston, who went on to Law yeah. & Order fame. Um, it's based on a New York Times writer's uh, 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 journeys in Cambodia during the Cambodian War. It is really a a, a, a sensational picture. It's the type of film. I, I can't believe you've seen it 10 times because I saw it once and I was like, okay, great movie. I never want to see it again. because it's Yeah, so it is a tough movie. watch, but I mean, I, I say 10 times I'm estimating, but you know, the movie's 40 years old now. So the first mm -hmm. couple of times I saw it was probably in the late eighties and I didn't really understand what was happening yet. It was just on, a, on HBO. And then and then you understand. And then like, okay, it's been 10 years since I was, okay, maybe not 10 times, but more than five, I would think, you know, because okay. again, it came on HBO a lot in the middle to late eighties when I was a kid. I didn't even understand what was happening, but I watched the movie. Yeah, I, I've actually thought about sharing because I know my wife hasn't seen it uh, and she might be interested in it. She she likes these historical pictures, so I, I might watch it. Have you ever seen it, Tooch, the uh, Killing Fields of uh, Cambodia? Uh, it's about the war in Cambodia. The Killing Fields, is that what, the name yeah. of it? Yeah, yeah, Sam Waterston is the star. Yeah, 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 and yeah. The guy that plays the other gentleman who, uh, that is Cambodian uh, won a Best Supporting Actor, and it was his first film. Yeah, they right. put him through a re-education camp and all this terrible shit. I mean, yeah. it, it's it, when he when he survives, it's almost like ah, uh, you know, it's like the guy from the Midnight Express. You're like, yeah, he got away, but I still feel terrible, you mm -hmm. know. But it, it's a, it's a, a good movie though. Time ago, yeah. What uh, somebody here said they have a movie for you, Dan Aguirre, and I lost. Yeah, it was it. X, but we we talked about X. that one. I've seen yeah. X. Yeah. yeah, it's it's an excellent movie. I I like it. Good horror picture. I liked it too. I didn't see a lot. I was on the road this weekend. I saw anyone but you, which is uh, Sydney Sweeney, that uh, dance girlfriend. Oh, she's so mm -hmm. hot. I sent oh, Aldo a picture of her last night. I think I'll send it to you now too. Yeah, yeah. I I'll share it with everybody her, here. But yeah, her boobs are everywhere, Aldo. Oh my gosh, her, it's unbelievable. Her boobs are everywhere. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, and, and, she's so hot. Yeah. I um, he um, he. I saw something here that. It, it I just sent it to Tooch too. Yeah, it's it's she proudly displays those things, <laughs> and I want to thank yes, her sir. personally. <laughs> she's just a, she's unbelievable. She's a fucking ten. Bo yeah. Derek, like I know we're going back forty years, but how dare you call Bo Derek a ten when, when there are women like that on this yeah. planet? <laughs> it's like a modern day uh, Marilyn Monroe, you know. Oh, she's yeah. so fucking amazing. And you know that was it was yeah. a, it was a romantic comedy. It was pretty funny. I mean, it was like one of those. You know, comedy of errors, mistaken, you know, situations. Mm -hmm. Now, is that, that funny, at the theater or was that on a platform? It's on, I think it's on Netflix. Okay, I might check that out at work. Then. Yeah, maybe, or it was on my real streams. I don't know. It could be on real streams. Like, I just had, I get them, like, early, you know, on that, my bootleg setup. Tooch, you seen D.I. Doom too, huh? Yeah, it was great. Uh, why'd you like it so much? the theater. Uh, I mean, it's real faithful to the book. You know, and what's his name? Dennis Villeneuve. He's uh, he's a visionary director. It's like everything looks so cool, man. It's just yeah, he's it's he's amazing. A great yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's he builds that world, and man, you you you're in it. You know, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Shogun. I'm watching too. D starring. Watch a Shogun. A little bit of Shogun. Watch a few episodes tonight before it came out here. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, I, I was on the road, Aldo. You know, I went to. Had to go into Chicago. My wife and I were sick the first day. We're like, got really late start driving to Chicago. She went to the hotel, laid down, and then we took my my son out for dinner on Thursday mm -hmm. night. Friday went to Museum of Science and Industry where I lost my wallet. <laughs> like, oh, oh god! I was like, Fuck. go uh, end of the day, go to the uh, lost and found. Yeah, someone, some saint, turned it in. Got my uh, wallet. I didn't oh, have any cash. God. I would, I, I wish I had a twenty in there. I would have like. 
take the 20. You know, I would have been all right if they took the 20 for like a fighter's speed. You know, exactly. I got my got my wallet back. I lost my glasses on the trip. It was just like bad. Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah, I know. It's horrible. Oh, man. I, I had a bad head cold, you know? Yeah. It's like, I don't know whether it was a cold or allergies or something, man. It's just lost my voice. Tooch yeah. sounds like the way uh, some people view Joe Biden. Yeah, <laughs> I was man. today too. Today I had to run an errand on lunch. Go out and uh, uh, forgot my ID to get into the building. God, I got my boss I'm like I'm outside. Can you help me in? <laughs> you know, get back in the building. I'm like, I, I just can't think. I'm training. I'm doing People magazine. I just finished up a Caitlin Clark uh, ESPN magazine, which would be pretty good. Uh, they got to wait till uh, a few more. Uh, they're they're the number one, number one seed in, in the women's tournament, Iowa. Yeah, and then Iowa State got a number two seed. Yeah, it's like people are uh, uh, excited for a little basketball around here for tournaments. Uh, mm-hmm. Caitlin Clark she broke the you know the, broke the scoring record for NCAA. Um, She's awesome. Yeah, amazing talent. Fair Truth Nine wants us to, uh, wants our opinion on It Man, the martial arts movies. Uh, you know, seen it, any of them? It's in my queue. I still haven't watched it. I really want to watch it. I've only seen one and I loved it. Loved like there, it. There's, re, there's a original and a remake, right? Am I... Yes. I saw the original. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and I think there were like two or three after that. And then recently, they, I believe that they remade them. So, uh, uh, Dan, you're not into martial is, uh... arts movies, right? No, not really. Not really. I did want to ask you all, I'll briefly change the subject and you could go back to the martial arts. Did either one of you all watch Poor Things yet, considering I kept putting it over as being, I just loved it? I fucking loved it, Dan Aguirre. Oh, good, good, good. I didn't know you watched it. Yes, I saw it uh, just uh, before the Academy Awards. What's it called? Poor Uh, Things. Poor Things things with Emma. Ruffalo and Defoe. Yeah, did you watch it? I haven't watched it. It's in my queue too. I, I love. I haven't it. had a lot of time. My wife and I are trying to buy a house here around Des Moines area. It's just oh, like, well, it's congratulations brutal, in, in advance. I got it. I mean, although you've been in your home quite a while, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, do you remember uh, when you were? Do you remember when you were looking for your home, like yes. trying to find a house that like fit your fit your needs and whatever? Yeah, you know, like that is so stressful. And like my wife and I were like, you know, like that, like the our uh, where we're renting our 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 uh, apartment home right now is like, it sent us the thing is like the, the, the rent went up so high, man. It's just like, it's not worth it, you know, to, to stay here in this little tiny home. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're like, let's just start looking. We went and saw this great house, you know, it was the first thing we looked at. So we're like, eh, you know, but it, it, that's the best one we've seen since then. There's been nothing. It's been all crap since then. And it was yeah. great. It was like, first of all, we're like, uh, go down the street. We live off 50th street, go down to where it ends. But it doesn't end. It like keeps going on a gravel road. So you go up a gravel road up this hill into this like wooded area, and there's two roads, High Street and Commerce Street. And they're on a bluff overlooking the river, you know. And it's like this house that was up on the top top of the bluff in the backyard. You could look out on the river going down the Raccoon River. And I was like, man, but it's, it's unincorporated and stuff, you know. Uh, so yeah, we're trying, Cliff. And we're looking at one tomorrow that's nice too. And, and we. I, when, by the time I said, uh, I called the realtor, I'm like, look, let's just put an offer in at the end of the weekend. Put an offer in on the high street property. And he's like, ah, somebody already did. They accepted an offer. My wife and I are like, damn it. I, yeah, if I could so give you stressful. a 30-second 30 30 second anecdote, and again, it's not to like rub it in because I'm usually stressed out about all those kind of oh, things. Yeah. Like, I allow myself to get stressed out about everything I shouldn't sweat. But when I was married the first time, uh, she called me on a Saturday. She's like, what are you doing tomorrow? And I... I I said, uh, I'm off. She's like, well, you're going to go look at this house with me. And I was like, well, we don't even have any money saved up. She's like, we're just looking at the house. So I called the realtor, the number, you're going to go, be there. So we look at the house on a Sunday and and she likes it. And so the next day I talked to my friend, Joey. I was like, man, I dread having to go to banks and like looking, like begging for money. He goes, oh, just call this guy I have. I was like, that sounds like the fucking Sopranos. What do you mean call a guy? He's like, he works for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So we looked at one house. The next day, I called Lenny from the USDA. I had a fucking uh, a, a goddamn house in a month. We looked at one house. I called him within five minutes. He said, "I can approve your loan. 
uh, it'll take just a couple weeks. And I was yep. I, I, I a fucking homeowner just like that. Yeah. You looked at one house. Yep. <laughs> That's how it was for me. Yeah. After we looked at that house, I went and got approved. It took like one day to get approved for the loan. Well, you know? congratulations, man. I, hopefully you'll close on it in the next month or so. And Aldo, yeah. I guess, is going to take a dump. He left. Where did he go? Is he, uh, he got to use the bathroom, huh? So yeah, uh, and then uh, uh, no, no, let me acknowledge this, gentlemen. I, I saw you, sir. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't mean to ignore you. I saw that you said you were my Facebook friend. I, I'm, I know who you are, and yes, I, I am still getting laid. I, I am happily with my high school girlfriend again, twenty five years later. So That's yes, awesome. we we were together in ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety nine, and we're back together in twenty twenty four. And yes, she's putting out regularly. I'll tell you how great. No, Latouche, I'm not trying to be funny. This is what how my Sunday went with her. I met her kids for the first time, right? Her kids are in 12th grade and 7th grade. Yeah. So she said, I didn't know how to read it. I didn't know if I was good or not. She said it went well. So afterwards, she comes back to my house with me. She cooks me dinner. Nice. She washes the dishes. She Damn. gives me a 30-minute massage and then sucks me off. Is she Filipino? She's white. <laughs> Swear yeah. to God, that's how it went down. I was like, that's the most incredible trio of things. Yeah. Dinner. D along with the, she did the dishes it gives me gives me a massage and then sucks me off what a woman that's just the, yeah that's it man. what a woman it's awesome i love it when it works out that way and it's just great yeah super happy i'm super happy yeah aldo's back I think. So did, did you hear my story aldo no oh uh, let me tell you real briefly uh, 30 seconds uh, synopsis i i met my girlfriend's kids on sunday uh, again, they're in 12th grade and seventh grade. I hadn't met them yet, you know, and I didn't know how to tell if it went well. She said, it went great. You did fine. Everything's good. They liked you. But afterwards, and I say to you, what a woman afterwards, she comes back to my house. She cooks me dinner, washes the dishes, gives me a 30 minute massage, and then sucks me off. Wow. And if you don't wow. believe me, you can ask her in two weeks when she's tentatively going to be on the show. Well, so I, I want to know. She sucked me off. <laughs> <laughs> She's amazing. She's fucking amazing, man. Uh, I can't wait to meet her, and uh, that's in two weeks, right? So, let me well, hopefully, yeah. If, unless something would go wrong, uh, that's the plan. The calendar says that is April second, and so she should I be will, here. I am I supposed will, to be on vacation that week. Uh, fuck a uh, staycation. Mm -hmm. Well, I do, I do nothing but fuck her and maybe stain my decks. I have two decks. I, <laughs> I thought you said yeah. stain your dicks. <laughs> like, <laughs> how many how many dicks do you have? <laughs> <laughs> well, I will make sure not to wear any pants or underwear that night. And uh, that's, oh, that's fun. <laughs> I did a lot of driving around Chicago too. Although I forgot how much I hate the traffic there. Like oh. driving up, driving up from the suburbs into Museum of Science and Industry, it was like sitting in traffic, you know, on the eyes and how. And I was like, I, I wonder if did they fix the Hillside Strangler? It's still there, you know. You know, what I'm talking about the Hillside Strangler. Yes. You come in, yeah. you you're coming east on like from the western suburbs. You get to 290 at Hillside, Illinois. It goes down to one fucking lane. I'm like, it's been it's been like that since I was a kid. They still haven't fixed yeah. it. They still ridiculous. haven't fixed it, and every yeah. uh, every rush hour, it's the worst fucking experience of your life. You go know? there, and, uh, and yeah, uh, Google Google was telling me to go, and I'm like, I'm trying. I want to drive along Lakeshore Drive, dude. And see the see the lake. And that's going mm -hmm. down Lakeshore Drive down to Hyde Park. Go go inside the uh, uh, museum. And then my wife's like, "You take me to Seafood City. It's like a Filipino grocery store. They got restaurants and bakeries inside. That's south. So <laughs> southeast side, northwest side." going there's no good way you know i'm like i'm gonna yeah. i'll try the kennedy expressway is like red backed up you don't even want to try and get on there i'm like, I'm gonna go to milwaukee avenue it runs on an angle it's under construction you know, i gotta find elston avenue that also runs on an angle can't get there man it was brutal i had to go like belmont to cicero driving by the old xrt and my uncle mike's hot dog stand area you know take cicero yeah. up and finally got there <coughs> but yeah i forgot man I'm spoiled in Des Moines. There's no traffic, you know, just I get anywhere, you know, 20, 20 minutes. Yeah, that's, that is yeah. uh, hard plenty to of, get used to. Plenty of potholes there, uh, Buka. Yeah. Fuck, this, this is the My wife yelled, I hit, one, I hit one pothole. It was so huge. My wife was like, what the fuck are you doing to my car? 
you know? <laughs> yeah, Jimmy says, remember the uh, magic kissed uh, lip sign? Uh, a uh, staple of uh, Chicago. Um, anyway, uh, it is 1030. Dan has got to go to work. 9-11. Yep. I got to go yep. to sleep. Tooch has got to I work on uh, what magazine did you say you're working on? Uh, I got a uh, Caleb, Caitlin, Caitlin Clark. I got to like both the guys who do. It's like we have all these magazines and like they all follow the same like workflow and computer system, except for People Magazine because it's like weekly, you know. Yeah. So it's like a completely like arbitrary random workflow. And it's like, what are you supposed to do? And it's like some of the people don't use the computer system you're supposed to use to mark up the pages or to get messages to me or whoever. And uh, it's just, it's a mess and I haven't done it. You know, like I'm learning how to do it and I got this head cold, you know, but Friday's the only day I have to do it while the other two guys are on vacation. <laughs> so I want to thank before- Jay Grizz before I go. I saw that message, <laughs> yeah. man. Thank you, yeah. sir. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Thank you. you got any down. final words before you get out of here, Dan? Yeah. Um, I'm glad, like I said, to bring it full circle. I'm glad the Fields trade, if it was going to happen, I'm glad it's over with. And like, you know, yeah. we, we can move on and start talking. Like, here's the thing, guys. Anyone that's is that that was criticizing the show tonight, and I don't mean that defensively, just factually, yep. that the thought we talked too much about Justin. I can't speak for Tooch because he and I haven't talked about this, but off air, Aldo and I yeah. both, and we're like, God, we're so tired of talking about this same topic. Like, yeah. we get it, but every week there was a new story. Next, like next year, we won't, next week we won't talk about it. Right. Yeah. So it's it's almost li- it's liberating that it that finally the chains are off, yeah. so to speak. We don't have to keep talking about it. Yeah. So yeah, we didn't want to keep talking. About it. Just every week something else would happen. We'd have to talk about another story. Or did you see somebody said this and the Bears made this move? What's how's that imply what's going to happen? Like it was just something that it was newsworthy every week. It's not like we were just sitting here beating off talking about JF1, you know, but I wish him well. I wish you guys well. I got to go. Uh, I'm sorry it didn't work out for him here overall. Yeah. But again, he gave me a lot of good memories. A lot of good memories. You got how many jerseys? Uh, Fields four. Yeah. Yeah, So I got to start my uh, Caleb Caleb Williams. Uh, what fandom do you, what do sooner you do than with later. All those old jerseys, though. Well, my cousin stole a shit ton of them, That's but right. other yeah. than that, uh, they just were in my my closet. And when they get old, like like it's cool to wear like Cutlers again now because yeah. it's been so far away, you know, like or Mike Brown or somebody like that. You know, I'll wear those. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't really wear, you know, Rex or anybody. Like that. I, although I did wear the orange Rex during the season, and we won that night. So anyway. Uh, bottom line is I keep them unless they're stolen by a shitbag cousin. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dan, take care. Have a good day at work. All right, yeah, thank yeah. you. It was a good show, gentlemen. I like you all, and uh, uh, thank you, every, everyone that watched. I don't know if yeah. it was a good show. It was a good show, I guess. But, uh, I, I, it was good. I really, it was good. I, really I wasn't trying. I, I just I can't stand uh, people dunking on fields when they have, have zero uh, – uh, they, they use zero context – you know, because right, yeah, I agree. You know, with it's, you. It, it's it's yeah, it's it's insane. The other thing is, and I I don't I hate to sound didactic, but you know these guys are human beings. You know, yeah. this motherfucker Justin Fields played his ass off. He, uh, for he got bears. fucking walloped. Yeah. yeah, offensive line couldn't protect them, and sometimes it was his own mistake because he held the ball on too long. But the motherfucker, you cannot say to me that the guy didn't try. You cannot yeah. say to me that he didn't love this team and that he didn't like the fans. You can't yep. say that. And so you want to shit on him? Go ahead and shit on him. But at least do it with some decorum. And yeah. you want to shit on the fans that like him and respect him? Fine. Go ahead and do it. But at least do it with some decorum. Don't fucking shit on him like he's some fucking piece of shit because he's not. He's a human he's being. Good. He's a good kid, man. Uh, you know, like, it, it, I can't. You make a great point because it's like they're shitting on everybody, but a lot of that shit's getting on themselves. Yeah, you know? right. You know when that when they do that because I mean, uh, we're all fans of the same team. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, exactly. Uh, you know, uh, you you uh, you could say you hated his processing. Fine, I mean, but he he didn't get good coaching to help him with his processing. You know, mm-hmm. at least uh, not from what I saw. I mean, the offensive coordination was a- average or below, you know, the receivers were not, all, I mean, there's times that Chase Claypool, what the hell was he running? 
you know, Mooney was in the wrong spot. You know, maybe Justin like was looking for his his reads, and the guys just weren't there. Right. You know, some and then some guys were open. He missed. You know, he, uh, Aldo, you've pointed out many times he's got to hit this guy. You know, and mm-hmm. he wasn't. But I mean, right. I don't know Andy Ginoco, and Andy Ginoco's gone. He may be a great guy, but was he tell? <laughs> we don't know what he was telling Justin Fields. Exactly. You know? Maybe he was yeah. just like, oh, you'll get him next week, kid. You know, and, and, like, and Judah said that he's stupid. Maybe he, maybe he'll he'll prove you'll be proven right. You know, but I, I got a feeling that he didn't have no. the support system here with the coaching staff that could have really tapped into what he does well and yeah. limit the things that he didn't do well. But we'll he see. has he has some NFL records, man. Yeah, you know, uh, right. single single game rushing record for a quarterback: 178 yards against the Dolphins during a tank yeah. year. Yep. You know, fastest, a warrior, as Shorty fa- says. fastest quarterback to 2,000 yards rushing, 36 games. Amazing. Look at that. <laughs> as Mr. Shorty says, it was a warrior. Unfortunately, just a warrior that couldn't see the entire field, you fucker. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> He's right. Uh, Jimmy no. Santilli says, Tucci, I was upset with all the love for a bad quarterback. We've had bad quarterbacks for the past 45 years, yeah. and nobody loved any of them. Wait a minute. I love Jay Cutler. <laughs> Yeah I, Jay Jay, I, yeah, I love Jay Cutler. As soon, I kinda, you know, I hated, I hated him before he came to the Bears, but as soon as he put the Bears jersey, I rooted for him. I had to. Oh yeah, I mean, look, there was something about Jay Cutler's like attitude that I kind of thought was a little cool, man. Mm-hmm. Like he was aloof and stuff, and I'm like, he didn't care. Nothing rattled him. He, you want to talk about taking a beating, man? Jay Cutler took a beating on the Bears too, man. Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, the, the game that uh, Justin Fields broke Michael Vick's quarterback rushing record, he became the first quarterback in NFL history to rush for over 140 yards and throw three touchdowns. Look at that. That's an NFL record. So, I mean, yep. uh, you know, uh, against the Lions, he rushed for 147 yards, threw for two touchdowns, and rushed for two. He's the only uh, only quarterback ever in NFL history to have that kind of a stat line. <laughs> I got a <laughs> I want to apologize to Jay Grizz and everyone else who misses our weather reports. I'll get back on that soon. Just been busy with a bunch of other stuff. I, I, I you know, when I select these weather girls, it's not just, hey, look at the first pretty face. I actually audition these girls. I look at dozens of them before I pull that video. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, a, tell a, us what's going on Friday uh, on weekend sports betting tips. Is uh, what's going on Thursday though? First, before I say Friday, because the tournament starts Thursday. Oh, you know, Thursday so we're wondering yours, if we need, Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, well, because the guys and I are talking about maybe we do a Thursday instead yeah. of a Friday, or I, I, we don't know yet because uh, you know, NCAA tournament is starting. I, I do have if uh, do you like college basketball, Aldo? Tournament time, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, there's nothing like it. Yeah, right. That's, it, I, it, I used to go to Vegas every March because that's the time to be in Vegas. Yeah, it's such yep. a blast. Yep. yep, that would be awesome. I, I've always wanted to go during March Madness, but um, there is uh, a little stat I'll tell you if you're filling out your brackets uh, mm-hmm. for work or fun or with your friends or buddies. Um, there's uh, there's been uh, since uh, I forget uh, last twenty five or thirty five years something like that. Uh, the only teams who have won the NCAA championship, uh, they have uh, two. They have two things in common. They've uh, they have a top twenty offensive adjusted offensive efficiency number, so they're in the top mm-hmm. twenty in adjusted offensive efficiency, and then they're top thirty seven a defense adjusted defensive efficiency. Okay. And in this in this bracket of teams, there's eight teams that uh, fit that criteria. That's uh, UConn, um, Arizona, Purdue, Houston. Marquette, um, what's the other, uh, Marquette, uh, Auburn, and um, what's the other Big East? There's another Big East team, Duke. Oh, sorry, it's ACC, Duke. Mm-hmm. Those eight Those eight teams have, uh, have a top 20 adjusted offensive efficiency and a top 37 adjusted offensive efficiency. Keep that in mind when you're filling out your bracket or you're picking a champion or Final Four or uh, NCAA champion, none of them. Uh, every NCAA champion in the past, uh, like, 30, 40 years have had that stat, you know. So, oh, uh, that's amazing. 
So looking for one of those eight teams is be my would be my bet. All right. We'll get more information this Thursday on weekend yep. sports betting tips. They'll move yeah. from it'll be, it'll Thursday. be Thursday. It'll be either Thursday or Friday. Yeah, and like, to answer like to uh, Jimmy's question, listen, right. any one of those weather girls would be fine by me. Um, at the, at my age, the only way I'm going to have sex with a, a weather girl is if I kidnap so, her. Well, <laughs> Cheryl Teagues and Morgan Fairchild? Is that what you No, there's uh, these two local wo- weather girls. Okay. We don't know them because you're in Iowa now, but uh, yeah. they're, they're gorgeous. No women. idea. Did you put, yeah. throw, flash a picture up I missed? Uh, no, unfortunately, I have no pictures, and I want to get out of here, so I'm not going to go searching yeah, yeah. for them. So, yeah, I got um, to get some sleep, Aldo. Get some sleep. Take care of that cold. You know what you got to do is tea be, with a little yeah. Bacardi, a little Puerto Rican rum. Oh, yeah? You'll be oh, fine. Yes. I've been doing a ginger, fresh ginger, spicy, and lemon and honey. Is it worth it? Yeah, it's been good, but I, I think I'm going to throw some rum in there. You know, yeah, I gotta do the rum, man. It really, yeah, it, it's some, some of these guys. I, I, I might have scared away some of these guys, but I don't like them dunking on, on us for being Justin Fields homers. We're not Justin Fields homers, you know. <laughs> we we like the kid, deal. yeah, yeah. We, we no, like, we're not. We're, we, 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 we just want we, people to, to acknowledge yeah. that the kid played his ass off for us and was given a fucking raw deal, and you can't blame mm-hmm. everything on the kid. I still think the kid could be good somewhere else, man. Imagine if Matt LaFleur had him. Oh, shit, exactly. You know? He, would, he wouldn't have played for a couple of seasons. He would have developed his game uh, in the practice field and in the classroom. And yep. uh, LaFleur would have done magical things in terms of suiting a game plan for his talents. But yeah. we'll, we'll never know, I guess. We'll, we'll yep. see, though. All right, uh, Tooch, have yep. a great show on Thursday. The Thursday night is all yours. Yeah, prob- to- probably Thursday. Fr- uh, we'll see. But i got to talk to Sean and, and Anthony. Okay. Uh, tomorrow, uh, make sure you check out Mac and Reed at uh, 6 no six o'clock. Yes. Oh, before that, it's Bar Down Talking Hockey at 2 p.m. We've got three shows on tomorrow. And then uh, Thursday night, it is. Did you catch uh, uh, the South, South, South Burbs Hitman? I did not with uh, the stadium host from the White Sox. I forgot his name, but I, I, it's Eric one of the Lee. shows that, yeah, Eric Lee is. I think it's, yeah, Eric Lee. I think yes. it's Eric Lee. But, uh, yeah. I, man, I'm like, I was thinking about it before I show. I, I love the White Sox. You know, I've been a long time White Sox fan, but this year they're going to be so bad. I'm just like, what What the hell? I want to, I want to, you know, get in on one of these shows and find out, like, what are they talking about with the White Sox? There's nothing there to talk about. Yeah, I yeah. hope they surprise us. I really do. You know, these guys yeah. put so much uh, work into these shows, and and they get great oh, yeah. guests and so forth. Yes. But you know, when you're having yes. a losy season for a fucked up franchise like the Jerry Reinsdorf White Sox, people stay away. And so, uh, but I'm uh, I'm definitely got it on my queue list. I'm going to listen to it uh, when I go for a drive tomorrow. And uh, White Sox, uh, excuse me, South Burbs Hitman yeah. every Monday night at eight o'clock. I, I think they'll start regularly once the season starts, which is pretty close. I didn't take Jay, Jay Grizz makes a good point. I didn't even think about this. What you, 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 you me, and Dan haven't even been together since Justin was traded, and that was Saturday. It's Tuesday. They're yeah, like, exactly. They're they're like oh, they're like so full of Bears talk. You and I haven't even talked about it at all. Yeah, exactly. You know? So, anyways. Yep. We want you to love us, but uh, at the same time, if you don't, go fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I was rough on people. I just, I just can't stand the no context people. That's just no. Uh, I I hear yeah. you. It's it gets frustrating. There were you a couple know? times where I bit my tongue. I wanted to say f you to yeah. some people. <laughs> yeah. That Judah guy my, just rubs me wrong. I know Zach says that he's listened to his okay. show Gyp- and, he, and he likes Mike, the content. Gypsy yeah. Mike and and Judah tribe, they're just like dunking on us. You know, and yeah. you're not really dunking on us, man. If you're you're uh you're dunking on like a three foot nerf kitty basket, really. <laughs> you know. <laughs> all right, everyone. We will see you all next week, same time, same station. And remember, we got a full slate of programs here uh tomorrow. Best way to stay on top of stuff is to subscribe uh, to the channel. You'll get alerts on your devices. Take care, everybody. Right. Take care too. I'll see y'all though. Yep. Right. Good night. Thank you.